Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield uh, Board of Health and Select Board meeting on March 11th, uh, 2020. We're reconvening back here at the Town Hall after a um, public hearing over at the Deerfield Elementary School for the Deerfield uh, FY21 budget. So um, we have a couple hearings first off and uh, we're a little behind schedule, but we're going to start with the Capital Improvement Planning Committee for the FY21 to 25 plan presentation. So welcome. Thank you. And uh, we are going to officially open the uh, March 11th Capital uh, Improvement Planning Committee meeting at, uh, let's see, we got 742. <clears throat> and the first thing we're going to do is we have to vote minutes of our last meeting. We do have a quorum here, okay. so we can do that. And then we'll jump right into our uh, capital improvement plan. Okay. Um, I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Thank, Thank you, you, Jack. And I'll second that. Thank you. Actually, it was um, Rachel. Oh, Rachel. Well, Rachel, whoever took yeah. the meeting the minutes, that's wonderful. Thank you. So and that'll be seconded. And are any discussion? Any questions? Okay, put it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Opposed? Aye. Abstain. Abstain. We have two abstain <laughs> abstentions, excuse me, because of because not being right. present. Because right. I, uh, okay. I did neglect to mention that the numbering on one, two, three, four, five under the five year capital project plan included changes in minutes or something. It said number three says add in progress the years 23, 24, and 25 for the, and there's nothing there, and then there's a four line item housing. I think that's supposed to all be one sentence, and there should only be four. Right. Items. Okay, we'll correct that. We'll amend that minute <clears throat> item. Good, good catch. The only comment I had. All right. Okay, so uh, I believe everybody has a copy of FY21 Capital Improvement Plan. If people want, there are copies here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. In the approach, I think what we're going to do is we're going to run right across line item for the entire five years. Okay. I think that might be a little bit easier to do. And then we can come back and summarize the actual capital budget for FY21. So we'll just run down line item in that. And the if I go askew here a little bit, just call me on it. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. So we have town offices, under town offices, we have a town office file server and anticipated in 22, 2022 will be $20,000. The town hall roof, and this is, I know we did the police station roof, uh, but this is different. This is the actual town hall roof. And again, anticipated for FY22 would be $35,000. Uh, building inspe inspections, electronic archiving, FY22 would be $35,000. FY23, $35,000. And FY24, $25,000. You get to public works here. And the first item is the wastewater treatment plan upgrades. We all know this is going to be uh, a big ticket item. So we have FY21, we have $1,547,000. Anticipated in FY22 is $5,724,000. And anticipated in FY23 is three million six hundred twenty-one thousand five oh one. FY twenty-four, FY twenty-five, we have written in there in progress for those two years. Uh, we know on the first round with the 
uh, South Deerfield plant, we're going to be probably a little over 11 million. Mm -hmm. 11 4. Uh, right, 11 4. And then uh, the Old Deerfield plant is to be determined. It right. could be, you know, up to a total of 30,000. We don't know yet. So that's why it's in progress. 30 million, yep. For the I total, meant 30 yeah, million. Total Thank project. you. I'm, I keep trying to reduce I know the numbers this are waste staggering. Good. <laughs> yes, it would be very good. We'll put it on this year's plan. Uh, we'll these numbers came about. Well, you get down here on the flatlands from where you live, you know, it's, <laughs> right. it throws you off. These numbers came about with, uh, with the David Prickett's. Basically, what we use is their uh, cumulative cash flow numbers. Mm -hmm. Yep. that they have here for the implementation of this project. Yep. And so what we did was we simply did uh, a summary of Whatever's gonna budget be year per, right. Per, per budget year. Yep. Right, per. And that's how we came up with those numbers. So they should be close. Are they going to be exact? Probably not. We'll get adjusted. But I think it gave us a pretty good ballpark Yep. Then the next one we had culvert replacement, FY21, 500,000. FY22, 100,000. This is anticipated. FY23, uh, 100,000. FY24, 100,000. FY25, 100,000. And if uh, you know, we have a contingency on this with MVP, so there's grant money involved, hopefully, we'll be able to replace, uh, excuse me, reimburse some of these costs. Mm -hmm. We're gonna try very hard. Right. And uh, the next one was Kelher Drive culvert replacement, and we had $196,895 voted at special town meeting on January 1st, uh, excuse me, January 29th, 20, to appropriate that money. For the current fiscal year. For the current fiscal year, yes. <clears throat> and then uh, we had a request that came in from the Energy Committee, and they're looking at the LED street lighting, and uh, they had nice enough to come in and inform us to get this on the capital plan for FY22 for a $150,000 request. Do, and one second, do, do you have a question now or after? Or what we whatever you'd like, I just wanted to let you know that we're applying for those in the Green Communities Grant. Oh, wonderful. So oh, fabulous. Okay. May or may not. Go ahead. We, we, we yeah. got mixed I, messages. I well, there, yeah, and it, and it needs to be too because it's a capital project regardless of the funding. So it's good to have it on here. And then, you know, we, uh, we exactly. had done it. Um, we had met with a consultant to do a study on street lighting and we kind of pushed that off a couple of times because it's, you know, it's coming yeah. up with the money. So it's wonderful that you'd be looking yeah. at we we also were getting mixed me we were also getting mixed messages on the credits that were available you know and the grant opportunities that were well, available I think we'll talk about that during okay our that's great okay, no so that's good. no fine the, no well, the good part is though it's it's, it's on the horizon it's it's on the capital plan so if all goes well yeah that'd right. Be great. right right won't need right that'd be nice thank you appreciate that and next item uh, was Ford F-350, 214 replacement, and that is on schedule for 2024, anticipated. There's a Freightliner truck, 204 replacement. Again, that's anticipated at 180,024. There is a trackless boom mower, anticipated for FY22 at 33,000. There's a John Deere loader, a 202, 2002, uh, anticipated for 22 at 180,000. 
there's an X mark more replacement anticipated for 24 at 12,000. And then there's an F-150 pickup truck replacement 2020 model for FY21 this coming year at 32.5. If anybody has any questions, you're more we'll than welcome to, to after, I think. stop me or jump in or whatever. Yeah. Uh, then we have roadside mower for FY21 and anticipated for 22. This is the more uh, worked with Eversource. Mm -hmm. So the 26,000 is being reversed, yep. reimbursed, excuse yep. me. Yep. So that comes out of wash. There was a request for a mini excavator cat 305 for FY. 2021 at 65.9, we did not recommend this as a finance committee. Capital. Capital. I'm capital yep. committee. You sit on the line. Sorry, I'm seat. on finance <laughs> committee too. Too many committees here. Yep. So. But you did put it into FY22 as a possible. Yes, we year. we did shift that into FY22. The committee kind of felt that. It would be a good idea maybe if we rented for a couple of years to get a little bit of a track record to see exactly how much we're using it and if it'd be cost effective. And there is a, a the original request they're actually put in for a CAT 305 mini excavator, but also for a CAT 308 because they weren't too sure which one that's a would lot best more money suit the and town. Bigger, bigger unit. So yep. if we, we felt that maybe if we did a, a rental and we did get prices for a rental, we felt that if we did a rental for a year or two, it would give us an idea of how cost effective it would be to own it. But it would also give the highway department a better idea of actual what yeah. size, size is would big be enough better. or not. Yeah. Right. A smaller the next or a larger size amount. So, yeah. It was a lot more money. So that's that's how we address that request for for this year for this coming year. Then obviously we had the Oxford land uh, purchase buyback at the special town meeting back in September 19 for three hundred fifty seven thousand two hundred eighty dollars. Senior housing anticipated for 2022, $150,000. And then we put 23, 24, and 25 in progress. The reason why we use the term in progress is we simply don't have any numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, we know people, some people want to make this happen, but uh, it's, it's, take a little time it's to just right. A it's just a little too mm -hmm. early for us to try to, to try to predict numbers, that's yeah. all. Yeah. So we did feel that FY22, if we put some money in there, mm -hmm. if we need to do something, we could. And thank, then the you senior that. center slash church feasibility study, there is a request, FY2021 request for $50,000. Uh, after quite a bit of discussion, the committee decided to table this and push this into FY22. And part of that uh, 50,000, the committee was more focused on the building. And right now we have an assessment of that building going on. So we didn't feel like we wanted to try to appropriate money for this year <clears throat> for that building. Now. Uh, I know Trevor questioned this uh, in one meeting just a little while ago, and, and I guess it's just simply the way of looking at it. Trevor was looking more of the whole property, not just the building. And not even the property, really. Right. I'm just looking at a futuristic, I don't care where it goes, how big of a senior center do we need? What, what needs do we have in the three towns? What kind of space are we gonna need? What kind of programs are we gonna use? Right. So more of a feasibility study of what do we need for a senior center 
not really where is it going to go and what building would we use it in right. or could we use it in. So right. we will find out, you know, and I, I understand where you're coming from and we mm -hmm. want to know what that building can support and, but I don't want to pigeonhole it to that building yet. So, right, yeah. So we're, well, we're, we had, right, and we had, the committee had voted to yep. just move that into year, 22 and then as far a, as the 50,000 and then 23 for another 150,000 to get plans uh, going to see where that brought us. Yep. I just think I think we thought that the that the proposal was kind of vague. It is. And it needed to be fleshed out more and actually you just fleshed it out more than than you had for than info. We had it. Yep, that's fine. We were, but we're also yeah, we we're, understand. We're, we're also really hanging our hat on hopefully being able to work with the community um, assistance person uh, Sue Conley who from we the met state from the right. state who we met has committed to us to try to figure out right. wh how are we going to work this out. Yeah. So we're getting some help from the state on that. So it, it makes sense to kind of wait a bit. So we'll, yeah. we'll see how it goes. Okay. And I'll, I, I have a general statement that I'll mm -hmm. mention at the end of this whole thing. Okay, great. So just yep. uh, complete streets program and there was 40,000 allotted last year. Uh, that was recommended and I believe approved. This year there was no request, but there was an anticipated request for another 20,000 in 22. And then you'll see in 23, 24, and 25 in progress all the way across. What we have there again is the complete streets. We have a little bit of a game plan here that mass possible projects right. yep possible projects there's 20 projects here and it came to a tune of like 3.3 million and i don't believe that was with the engineering costs if i heard right. correctly that's correct so uh obviously all of that complete street once again is going to be determined by grant monies what's available what and what's do? not what and are we tackle? that is going to my understanding of it will dictate how soon this some of this gets yes. done yes and and to clarify a bit you know that um your committee was gracious if, enough to give us um give the town 40,000 last year recommend 40,000 last year and that is sitting in in a spot wet, wet, ready to start a, a complete sheet program so it's not that we're not going to do one this year um, we're going to request some money again in 2022, but we do have money set aside to start focusing on that Correct. already. So it yeah. kind of gives us a year breather, but we have some money already allocated that was last year's plan. All right. And then uh, we had a request for the Town Common design and improvements on the Town Common FY21 for $40,000, which is recommended mm -hmm. uh, for the $40,000 by the committee. And then there'll be another anticipated 55,000 in 22. And this was broken out <clears throat> away from the complete streets because uh, last year when we originally discussed this, they were kind of tied and come to find out it got very confusing because the state had to be involved with it and had limited what some, some projects that the town could be doing right so it just appeared that it'd be easier and cleaner if it was broken out right and, uh trevor has uh headed an ad hoc committee yep. and we met with those people and uh yep. you know they brought up some very good points so this is where we're at yeah with that. hoping to move forward on on that right. pretty quick And if we go down to the police department here, they have a closed circuit TV system anticipated for 2023 at 25,000. The next was a request for FY 2021 for uh, 35,000 for mobile data terminals for the cruisers. In other words, they're computers and uh, that was recommended by the committee the police data migration and that was for uh, storage of their records yeah. and they had a FY 21 request of 23,000 and that was recommended 
and basically what that does is it takes all their records and put it in one spot. Yeah, they have old servers, right? right that they and they have old servers and that. And yeah. It's just to clean that all up and make that a little more convenient. Mm -hmm. And then you have Tilton Library, and again, uh, FY22 anticipated. We did not get a request for FY21 for ballpark eight million dollars. Uh, understanding is is that we would have to fund that eight million dollars, but I think it's three point nine would be reimbursed, and that could happen sooner. They are on the list for the grants in. From what we're hearing, that that grant uh, award could be moved up some. So we'll just have to see how that plays out. There's right. not a lot that we can do about it at this point. Yeah. Then recreational f facilities. We had a request of $100,000 for FY21. And the committee, again, after a lot of discussion, we ended up tabling this. We didn't want to say yes, we did not want to say no. Uh, basically, they have a vision, but they don't have a plan. So it's in the very preliminary stages. Mm -hmm. And the grand total here, if you run across for 22 through 25, you'll see 100,000 plugged into each year there. Their grand total uh, of the scheme of things, they're looking at a little over, I think it was 1.1 million is what they were thinking. So uh, the discussion was <coughs> go back, do a little more homework, try to see if you can nail down a few things and then come back to us when you have a, a little bit better plan. And they were very agreeable. They understood. Yep. Yep. And so we'll see what develops here. Okay. Here we come okay, and then generator. going down <laughs> to the uh, Deerfield Elementary School uh, request. This is going to be 21 Ken's for, decision solely. Pardon? Uh, it's going to be Ken's decision. Ken, really? Ken, Ken's going to be mad. Uh, oh. For $68,000. He can shed some historical the, light on this. The, the, committee, the committee did not recommend this. There was a lot of discussion yes. about this. I mean, you know, people at school were very good. Yeah, Trevor was very been. good. We went round and round. Uh, uh, you know, if you put it out there, you'd probably get about a 50-50 split with the town because we, we were, we we were struggling with it. What this. it comes down to is that $68,000 is a request for a generator for the elementary school. There's, uh, at this point, they had put away $25,000 several years ago Yes. when the generator discussion came up for, and that's still sitting on account. Yep. Uh, that, I guess through interest in that, is up to about 27000 So what we have right now, as it was explained to us, was that uh, they have a system that is wired with a manual switch and ready for a generator. And supposedly generator comes on property, they can hook it up, hit the switch, and they're good. What they were looking to do is uh, do a generator that had an automatic switch, which meant, which meant buying a generator plus rewiring some of the box, electrical box, change, change the switches as far as manual to auto, and for, for a cost around 40, 41000 Right. in addition to what's sitting there. Now, uh, part of that was to protect food items in the freezers. Part of it was uh, for sprinkler heat system and and basic lighting in that. Uh, also, sprinkler. in the application so for this, freeze. 
they had talked Keeps about uh, using using it for uh, a shelter also, and it was expressed to us that they really did not, certain people really did not want to use the place as a shelter because you can, some of that gets involved mm -hmm. as far as as it far wasn't as some, that easy it's not in our plan right some now. of the regulations and that. It, so Jeff, you're, you're being very sweet. You can just <laughs> say that I would do not. Volu would not volunteer that place as a as a. It's right. not set up for that. I mean, right. depending on what kind of apocalypse set. we're going to have, but um, right. it truly is not set up for that. So well, it's better set up than the fire nothing. station that is currently. Oh, I thought it was position. Frontier. I thought Frontier was there. Frontier is yeah. This yeah. is desi right. state but designated. Right. Yeah, one. depending on what kind of thing you're you're working on. Uh, but yeah. um, so we were really struggling, um, and I'm still on the fence on this. I I think. You know, we have 27, so 40,000 dollars is short money to to insure a very expensive asset in the town. And it's not so much just we have insurance. If we lose power and it freezes and we lose, you know, some ceilings and stuff and piping, we have insurance to fix that. But however, um, we don't have a place to put kids for several weeks or a month or however how long it's going to take to Huge remodel disruption. and redo all that stuff. Right. So. In, in, in the realm of ins insurance, it's smart to kind of put a system in there to protect it. However, it's been, I don't know how many years, and it would take a long time. 2011. 2011 since we lost electricity for a long period of time. And so the risk is short. It just, we're on the fence because as soon as we don't do it, we're gonna have an ice storm, we'll lose power forever, and we won't get a generator, and we'll lose the school, and whatever. So it's just Murphy's <laughs> Law. So well, I just. Can I just say yes, one, one thing about this? The request was for $68,000. And part of our discussion was how could it possibly be $68,000? And, and we didn't, I didn't feel that, that we really had a firm estimate. And in one of our meetings, uh, Chief Pachurik thought, and I'm not sure what his qualifications are. Other I think than just those, doing this one here. Right. Maybe, okay. Yeah. He thought that the the estimate that that a, a more a more accurate estimate would be more like fifty thousand. Could be, yeah. But that that wasn't the that wasn't the request. Yeah. So we, we don't so, know because it's got to be so a three if was, phase. And if I it was fifty thousand, then we already we already have twenty seven thousand. Now it's not it's not a lot of a lot of additional money. But but there was just too there, I think there was too much confusion over. Yeah, I don't think anyone got a solid figure as to what it would cost. Maybe it's three you could phase. You need that three was submitted was, age. was based on an estimate provided by a generator contractor. Right. And the facilities director put that number in with the full realization that it would probably come in Less. significantly under 68, but he didn't want to be under. Right. So he put a $68,000 number yeah. out. And then we've had subsequent guesstimates from other contractors that have said it could be in the neighborhood of 50,000, it could be in the neighborhood of 45,000, it could be in the neighborhood of 55,000. Right. So the 68, that's where the $68,000 number comes from. Yep. But for now, it's, let's set it aside and if it comes up, if it rears its head again, the, the committee was looking for direction. Right. We now have it. Yep. We Which could still take the 25,000 and upgrade the, the transfer switch and have it, you know, fully yeah. ready yeah. when the time comes. And but I, it, yeah, go ahead. I agree, you know, with what Ken is saying because our committee struggled with this too. Mm -hmm. A yeah. lot of us were on the fence too. We yep. saw both sides of it. So it's like, do we assume that we are not going to be able to get a generator mm -hmm. that we can simply plug in? Or are we assuming that, oh, we're going to have a real bad storm and we'll need it? And yeah. so it was a, it's, it was mm -hmm. a crazy <clears throat> discussion to have. But I don't think it's, I don't, myself, and I appreciate the school committee reaching out because I don't think the, I don't want this to sound like it was a school committee or a school request no, solely. No, they just wanted it to wasn't. know what should they we do. They brought it forward for the town to discuss. Right. And even with our committee, just because we did not recommend it, we, we understood the discussion in that. Yeah. But we felt, or at least I feel, that 
it wouldn't hurt for the finance committee to weigh in right. and the select board to weigh yeah. in on it also. And if we don't do it this year, you can always look at it next year or something. But. There'd be no harm to leave that twenty-seven thousand in for another year or two, right? And maybe get a maybe get a more accurate estimate mm -hmm. as far as what it would cost. And I know I know you're putting it off for a year or yeah. two, but it's still there. And the other thing too, and but of course we'll say this, and then we'll have a crazy yep. storm and we'll run into Knock a problem. But supposedly when they did that roof. They supposedly improved the insulation too. Yep. And if we haven't had a problem up to this point, supposedly with improved insulation, you would think that you'd be better off. You know, that's yeah. even a little more insurance. But you never say never, though. So true. So, anyways, that's that's where that got us on the on the generator my, my only word on that would be i replaced the same area in the same building three times from frozen <laughs> sprinkler pipes <laughs> every time oh, with the right? sprinkler company's assurance <laughs> that it would be fine and then we kept discovering new little things hidden at, behind walls at another so, building yeah. but you mean? yeah what's that at no. another building no it was building. all in the same building same oh, but place. At, at a different town i mean a different at a town different, building. Epiment. Different Epiment. yes yeah. i want to make yeah. sure yeah. <laughs> when i was okay. at Epiment. yeah yeah i know i so yeah, and it's it, it it's a tough one. You just you never yeah. know. So, so, so. Just wheel over. Well, <laughs> we had that. Discussion. All right, then with the elementary school <laughs> uh, restroom discussion. renovations and that request for fifteen thousand three hundred dollars FY twenty one, and the committee recommended that, and anticipated for twenty two and twenty three would be another uh, sixteen thousand each year to continue with those restroom renovations. And I have to say, I inspected those the other day. They look great. It, you know, I would even recommend at some point if we can accelerate that plan, because they're in, I, I toured all the other ones this week too, and it, they're in bad shape. Yeah. They really look bad. So, I mean, the, the job that they've done, you know, they're, a, they're a, like a heavy plastic or something, so that, you know, you can't deface them or write on them or anything. They just look great. So they did a good job and it really looked good and it'll be nice to update all the others. So. Good. And then we had uh, gym floor renovations and there'll be a request in 25 for 16,000. And that's to once again, uh, refinish the floor, repaint it and so mm -hmm. on. And just to keep it in decent shape. Also looks good right now. Right. Yep. And then with the elementary school again, replace flooring. Uh, FY 21 request of 18,000. It was recommended by the committee and anticipated for 22 and 23, 18,000 for each year there also. And I would point out that's pretty much been an ongoing effort for it the last grateful. 10 to 15 years. We've just been replacing parts of the building yep. constantly. Getting out the, the school carpet. committee. The school has been. Yep. So it's been great. <clears throat> and those are upgrades for a little easier uh, maintenance also. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. To, right. It's so in the long easier. run, it's a yep. uh, fairly Safer. decent investment. Yep. Maintenance and health. Yep. Right. Absolutely. It's interesting how that changed because, you know, we replaced and put everything down in carpet for, you know, our kids. Yep. Span. And carpet now we're going was back. Rage. And now, <laughs> now we're going back to the. Yeah, yeah much easier, the, much safer. Yeah, sure I know. Healthier. It's pretty interesting. Yep. And then they had uh, a request in here, or, or an anticipated cost, I should say. For the entry courtyard and south gym entrance resurfacing at the Deerfield Elementary School for FY22 at $50,000. But once again, uh, grant money will hopefully come into play with that. And that's uh, the MVP grant program. Yep, we're going to try to make that happen. And then there's, uh, again, anticipated for FY22 with the Deerfield Elementary School replacement of uh, backboards 
in gym equipment for $12,000. Anticipated FY22. Just lost my place here. Yeah, Get air, back conditioning. Here. air conditioning. Right, the air conditioning for skills in the music room, uh, sixteen thousand dollars. Just out of curiosity, Ken, how how much of the elementary school is a percentage wise is air conditioned? You had to ask me. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> the I just, the original. The original was just the central core, which was the the administrative offices and the library. Then we did the art room and the room next to it. Those were the next two additions. Um, and then I've lost track of what else has been done, so I don't honestly know, but a good portion of the building, and most of it's always been concentrated on cooling the areas that are utilized for summer programs first. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that so makes sense, but I, um, with the uh, climate changing so rapidly, we're you know experiencing higher temperatures and, earlier. And, yeah. Um, in the spring, and then you know it goes extends way into the school year. So and I just yeah. and um, there's more and more summer utilization of that building as um, well. Yeah, and the nice thing is the technology has moved to the the mini splits mm -hmm. make it very easy to just do specific rooms, and you're yeah. not yep. dropping the multi ton you know hundreds of tons units onto the roof and trying yep. to cool the whole building with them. So. Right. Um, it, well, that's why I was wondering, um, we have that 22 request. I, w I was wondering maybe we should put in for, have it, uh, some submission next year that would, you know, um, make we sure that. now will make sure that they, they make it a priority for next yeah, year. Yeah, <clears throat> for the rest of the building to be done. Sorry to interrupt, Good. Jeff. No, that's all right. That's fine. So those actually heat pumps that you're looking at or the air conditioners? Uh, mini splits. It would, yeah, it's yeah. a heat pump. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Gives you a little heat and air conditioning capability. Yep. So yeah. Until it gets down to about 10 degrees, then there's not much heat. <laughs> Actually, they, they, they function pretty well these days mm -hmm. down below zero. I've got, I, when I was at Bement, we put up two dorms and mm. we had supplemental heat included in the designs and we eliminated the supplemental heat and rolled the dice and we've never had a problem for the heat pumps, no matter how cold it's gotten. That's great. It's amazing. <clears throat> okay, and then anticipated FY 2024 from the Deerfield Elementary School, again, would be the upgrade and replacement of kitchen equipment. Obviously, uh, Right now, we are keeping an eye on the dishwasher over there. I was just going to say, yeah. we, yeah. if operationally, if it's down, that's a also a health risk. But mm -hmm. um, it makes no sense to keep dumping money into the dishwasher. So yeah. you might want to. Just going to check into that with Bill and see where okay. I, you know what the real needs are there. All right. You get a report back to us. Yeah. So and then the last item would be. Uh, we're recommending 250000 for the capital stabilization fund for FY 2021. It was recommended by the committee and then anticipated 22 and 23 would be an additional 250000 per year. Uh, what discussion has been with different groups is hopefully to try to build that stabilization fund to about a million dollars. And that sounds like a lot of money. It is a lot of money. There's no question about it. But uh, we're a little concerned about when we hit the wall here and there is so-called limited free cash, which I really dislike that term. I think a lot of other people do too that we can still address some of the capital needs of the town. We may, may not be able to address them all, but at least address some of them because, as I said, a million dollars sounds like a lot of money. It is a lot of money, but also by doing a capital stabilization fund, it makes people stop a little bit and think of what are the, real the wants, needs and wants and what are the needs and what's the difference here and because it takes two thirds to exit that by uh, the voters. And the hard part is when you get to budget years like this year, 
whether you'll have 250 to put in. Right. So we're really struggling with that right now. Right. I think finance has it in at 200 now. We met last night and we talked about uh, 150 and putting 50 towards the clarifier project. So, you know, and spacing that clarifier project out for four mm -hmm. years and get that paid off. And, but, you know, I don't know. Right. So well, that's a discussion we'll all make when we sit together right. and talk. And that's, that's why I wanted to point out uh, at our, we'll run these numbers in yep. a second here, but just in general, to start off with, uh, I think the capital committee did a pretty reasonable job with this plan. You did, yep. With the time frame that we had to work with, because to, in all honesty, and I saw this coming, that's why I really didn't support this last year, was by putting a 60-day uh, deadline on us prior to town yeah. meeting, yep. it makes it very difficult to do a real solid plan because the numbers are varying all the time. And especially and, in these you months. Know, the select boards, you, you people are still dealing with numbers that are switching on a daily basis. Yep. Our finance committee, we met last week, and even by reducing this capital request, the 250,000 capital request, even by reducing that by 50,000, we still didn't have enough. To, right, to do the budget with everything that's being requested, that would leave us $16,000 of so-called free cash. We right. usually run, as you all well know better than I do, you know, we're usually in the two to $300,000 ballpark minimum. that, right, minimum, minimum that mm -hmm. we can carry over if need be or mm -hmm. rely on if something major happens. So right now, we are in a situation where when we look at this capital plan, we're supposed to, as far as the bylaw, we're supposed to, the capital committee is supposed to be reflecting what the town can actually afford and to, to all of a sudden run this through and find out that if we're funding not only this, but everything else, that now all of a sudden we come down to, we only have 16,000 free cash well, obviously, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we had another month as far as a committee, maybe we could have looked at this a little differently. And yeah, the numbers get a little right, better. The numbers, about right. Now. But now, so now we're in a situation of this has been presented, the capital plan has presented. So we're going to once again have to leave it in the hands of the select board. Uh, obviously, we're probably going to have to amend something. Right. And may have to amend this plan. Yep. We and obviously we may have to go back with our town budgets. Mm -hmm. And yep. You know who knows? Maybe even the school budget. Yep. And try to do something with it. But I just want to because, you know, for for FY 2021, mm -hmm. just on the capital improvement plan, just so people focus, we have a we have a number there of. What was requested was two million seven hundred seventy dollars, uh, two million seven hundred seventy thousand dollars, seven hundred dollars. It came down to two million four hundred eighty-six thousand eight hundred dollars that we recommended. Out of that, though, you have wastewater treatment plant, <clears throat> which is one point five. Mm -hmm. And then you have a few others, but your actual dollar amount is like a hundred and sixty three thousand eight hundred dollars of your typical town your typical capital project. or school in town. Actually I think it's a pretty light year compared right, to what we capital request and it is. Yeah. And it's a good thing it is because that's why I wanted to point out. It's a good thing this is a fairly light year because yeah, we're, we're already, already in trouble. Already. And that's and that's with you know, obviously we know that most likely, that two hundred and fifty thousand dollar capital request is going to need to be adjusted. Unfortunately. Yep. But it is what it is, and right now, right now, in account, uh, we're a little over six hundred thousand in the capital stabilization fund. Right. And again, people might think that's a lot of money, but so when you look quick. here on this, 
you know, you've got a couple items, and that 600000 is gone. So, uh, but I would like to... I would like to take the time to thank all the mm -hmm. capital uh, improvement committee members because I really think that they put a lot of hard work in this, yep. tried to vet all the requests as best they could with the information that they had and the time they had, and I was happy to be a part of working with everybody. Yes, so thank you, and thank you for all you've done in that's, yes. them. That's where we're at. And, I thank you, Jeff. If there's um, any questions or comments. Actually, I want to go just go back to the minutes. I, I think I figured out what was going on here. Um, that line item number four should be line item senior housing, wastewater treatment plant, and complete streets. I think what she was saying was the in progress was for all three of those. So I okay. think we could just amend those. So we've already right. we'll voted just, to amend. Right. So let's we'll just, we'll make just that amend correction. that. Okay. So I think, you know, we accept this plan and we'll, you know, we will, um, you know, look forward to meeting with the Finance Committee and you know, a lot of you are on that committee right. and we'll, we'll get together, uh, hopefully, I think it's next week. Um, we're uh, trying to pick a date. Um, okay. It was maybe the 17th, maybe. Oh, I, oh, um, oh, I think it was the 17th. St. Patty's Day. 17th. Oh, it yes. I know our... Yeah. Six o'clock, six o'clock on the 17th. Six o'clock on the seventeenth for yeah. a joint meeting with the finance yes. committee. Yes. In the select yep. board. Yep. Yeah. Skip hadn't reached out to everybody this, okay. this afternoon when I talked to him. Because on the on the sixteenth, the finance committee were supposedly scheduled for a meeting. Yep. I so I don't is. know if he's going to do that meeting and then the next meeting. Well, Tuesday I, or I just have a, a Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition meeting, and you have somebody have else, something else. It's something else, and Dave is working, so. That wasn't going to work for the select board. Oh, for the 17th? Yeah, yeah it's a Tuesday. Actually, the 17th, I can make it. I thought, oh, it, was, right. I thought yeah. it was posted for the 19th. And that's at uh, 6 o'clock? No, that's you and I at the SCAMS meeting. So you guys oh, are posted yeah, for the 19th we're, we're, to attend we're, SCAMS. We have to post our meeting. Yeah. Even though I'm not a voting member. Yeah. I'm You're the fiscal agent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now that you're the um, SCAMS person, you come yeah. once in a while. Yeah, so you're posted. No, the 17th, I can make it. I'm going okay. to ask. So he can make it to the 17th. Sure. So that's you guys. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. it's up to Skip. So, it, so on Tuesday, the 17th, the 17th at 6, 6, 6 o'clock. Right. The 19th is confusing, but that's the SCEMS meeting for Dave and I. Okay. All right. That's not, then, uh, not a selection meeting. I'll leave that up to Skip whether he cancels the 16th and, and just or meets or the 17th, uh -huh. or if he wants to still meet the 16th he, and the 17th. I think he may meet the 16th to kind of do the budgets we went over last night. So, right. So you guys can get that together and then come And then we meet together? Summer, if okay. you guys can both so meet both Now, nights. do you want the capital committee there? Sure. I'd love well, if, if anyone wants if to if come. You're, yeah, you're welcome, I mean, uh, please. And Jack, we need all the intended as our finance select board, not a Correct. finance select board CIPC. But we're going to be talking about the capital. Well, I get that. I'm just, yeah. I'm yeah. just trying to okay. figure out and put it down. Why is everybody's posted for Do you it? want me to just <laughs> simply send out an email to the finance committee that we are having? I mean, the capital yeah. improvement yes. committee. Yes, and uh, I think we should FIN post committee it. And the select board are meeting, joint meeting. If they want to be well, there, they're more than welcome to come. It should be posted that way because um, if we if talk about meet, capital, yeah. we'll have a quorum because John Bereski might be there. And okay, so you are... Yeah, I would post right. it for a, a three-board meeting if, if we can. And that way, if anybody has discussions, we're all there. Right. No, one's, no it's not going to be a quorum question mm -hmm. because yeah. right. if John Bereski's there, we have a quorum. Right. And then we okay. can make some... Because I really think we all need to put our heads together and figure I this thing out. I don't think that's so. a bad idea. So... We'd have it, as many many people in the room that kind of figure yeah. that out. I mean, so, so we're, I'm sorry, we're posting a CIPC meeting? CIPC. Yeah. 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 For that day, too? Yeah. For the 17th yeah. for 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. You do that, Jack? Yes. You can wear Thank green, you. Jack, if you want. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'll plan on it. Mm -hmm. Annalee, you had a question? Yes, Annalee Wolfco. I don't know if this is a um, typo under public works, the Ford F-150 pickup, a 2020 model that we're replacing? No, it doesn't. I think he's thinking we're going to get a 2020 model. Oh, yes, okay. it's a it's a year the okay. year and of the vehicle. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're we're getting a deal potentially. Yeah, pretty sure. Well, we're getting well, a deal on a vehicle that we shouldn't really have. 
Yeah. Well, I don't believe we should have a two-wheel drive vehicle in our fleet. Uh, I, well, I we asked, we, we had we quite a discussion about that, and we asked Kevin specifically, asked him about the two-wheel drive compared to the uh, four-wheel, and he said did not have to go to the expense of the two-wheel drive for what they use it for. He said that's all they need, and I said, are you sure? Why not go? And he said, no, you don't, you don't need to the, for what we use that vehicle for. The two-wheel drive is just fine. And he well, thought it was an advantage having a lower suspension. Right. So they could get into the bed e more easily for yeah. whatever purpose they were. More fuel efficient. And yeah. Because we did, we did discuss well, that. Well, I was worried. So. I was thinking that from a, you know, if we had a breakdown in one of the other vehicles, you could put a plow on it. It had the capacity, if it was four-wheel drive, you could use right. it as a backup for a plow. And well, we, we didn't really get into that. We were just... I just want to discuss whether we're going to, whether we need this this year or not. Um, and, you know, we, I know we bought one last year and kind of moved. I, there was a shuffle of the, years. The one we last year was a two-wheel we drive, wasn't it? No, right. that, I think that was four. That was four. No, we we went, following. right, we went from uh, F-250 last year or year before to an F-350. Yep. And that's a four-wheel drive with a nine-foot plow compared to an eight-foot plow. Uh, huh. I'm trying to. There was a shift. I'm trying years. to word this, and I can't remember as, why we as did that. politely as I can. What we have, and I think it's great. What we have is some departments have a schedule, and they have a replacement schedule, and they're locked into that replacement schedule. So when that vehicle hits that year and it's on the schedule, it's supposed to be replaced. Whether they, whether they, whether could, whether they could actually get away with another right. with, year or not. Without. If they could squeeze another couple of years right. out of it, it comes down to, it comes down to at that time, when that time frame's up, say a 10 year period. Do we evaluate it? Should you, right, exactly. Should you sit down, reevaluate it, figure out what's happening, what's not happening? Uh, you know, 10 years now, before, years ago, 10 years on a vehicle was pretty good. Nowadays, 10 years on a vehicle, and I know they use it for work vehicles, but there's a lot of contractors out there that use work vehicles and get more than 10 years out of them. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not trying to point fingers at anybody, I'm not trying to pick on anybody. I'm just saying instead of having that automatic renewal, maybe we need to, at that point, and it's a good idea to have a plan, but at that point, should we really actually reassess yeah. those vehicles and do they need to be replaced? I mean, or can you safely, safely get yeah. a couple more years out of them and have them, you know, and cost effective too. Right. If, if something's breaking down all the time, in, that, yeah. you know, hey, it's got to go, it's got to go. Yep. Understandable. But just because it's on a schedule, a replacement schedule, uh, might not necessarily mean that it needs to be replaced. Right. And there was some confusion on that truck because when it originally the first request that came in, there was a different truck that was going to be replaced. And we asked about it, and then, well, no, we'd rather really replace this truck. So we asked for a, dish, a different paperwork in that, and just to make sure that was justified. Well, the, my, my confusion, though, was I thought last year we didn't need a truck, but we moved it forward, and that we weren't going to need one this year. And then I saw the truck again this year, and I could have that all right. wrong, but I thought well, there was a year that we were going to be free. I think right. it was... Or we were maybe going to buy two one year, so we pulled right. one up. To I be honest agree. with but you... It was, we, I don't think we were surprised that there was, a, there was another truck this year. I think it right. was... Okay. To be, I think, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I, I would just point out that Kevin has, uh, over the last two years, has consistently said that if you give him one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year for the next thirty years, just one hundred and eighty thousand every That's year, it. he'll be able to keep that, you know, department right, furnished right. the way he wants. I mean, equipped the way, the way he needs, needs it. Um, but you know, the, when you have a plan and you've got things scheduled out and you get to a 10-year point and you reassess and you bump that thing out a year, now all of a sudden you're bumping up against other plans right, and you can end up with, right. with a double it. dip in a subsequent right. year. So in, He did have a good chart in those yeah, 30 right. years. And, and, and they, they really do. do, they really have been working 
diligently. They, he's, you know, he's got a good man, good mechanic, yep. um, who right. really thinks outside the box, and the two of them combined have really put together a pretty, pretty good plan. So, mm -hmm. and right. here again, I don't have anything to complain about a budgetary wise. Right. <clears throat> it's smart to budget it out. Yep. Right. Sure. But if you get to that point, and you only have thirty thousand miles on that vehicle. Yeah. Why replace it? True. You know, so, you know, but the capital money can still be there and it can be used for maybe something else in the mm -hmm. same time frame. Being just, that. Yeah, just so, and, you know, this is the same format the fire department is using. Mm -hmm. And it works quite well for them. And it's just, you know, they're anticipating. Uh, sometimes you, you, know, you have to shuffle that money around a little bit to make those purchases, but right. they'll do it. It's not a steadfast. You know, fire department's a little different because of, you know, ratings on fire trucks and things like that. Um, as long as the vehicle's well maintained, it's a different story. So, you know, it's not like the old days when my uncle was the highway chief here. Right. You know, if you looked at those trucks, there was a lot of bailing twine on those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, and just, just to wire. clarify here, too, because I just want to, yeah. on our FY 2020 capital plan, which was last year, yep. and I don't believe you have it. I've got oh, copies here okay. if you want. They do have a truck for this year. Okay. Uh, That's, in I there. I thought they we had, shifted one. Last for year they had a truck to be replaced, which which was, did happen. And this year they did have it okay. on the capital plan. So it wasn't like it was unexpected. Added or something. Right. Not it wasn't me. added. It did come up. It was there. In fact, they have another truck uh, for 24. Okay. So maybe it was a shifting of a different type of truck. I thought there was some change, and I couldn't right. remember what it was. But so it was it was on the it was on the plan. It's just we're going to have a hard year. And <laughs> I agree with out, Ken so. that they they have done a, a pretty decent job. Oh yeah, oh yeah, no doubt. I mean their plan their their plan over just about anybody's is really good. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you. All right. So I'll make a mo okay. motion to adjourn the. CIPC. Second. Okay. Thank you for all coming in favor. Out tonight. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks very again much. for all your work and yep. everything you do for the town. Really well, appreciate it. Thank you for Can't your patience and appreciate it. And sure. Thank you for waiting for a few minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> it may. Sure. that we have to somehow come up with. Should I, be, should I be nervous? Yes, you should. <laughs> yes, you should, should be. I, should Absolutely. I be making plans? I was going to run across those that? numbers and no, I forgot to. No, you've got a to. nice home. <laughs> <laughs> the select board's still in session, so they can run across units? those bottom yeah. numbers. Right. I yeah. forgot to. I'm going to give one to the town. <laughs> so, you know, it is scary, but, but notice that, you know, when you get to $5 million that we're allocating, and even this year, the 15, um, you know, 1.5 million we have, yeah. They, they were allocated as jobs, but they will be paid off over 40 years, you know, because that, that's part of the sewer project. So yes. while we allocate that that project will happen in this year, we will borrow for that money, yeah. but we're not coming up. We don't have to come up with $15 million that year. That's good. Yeah. That, that makes sense. me sleep Thanks. <laughs> we stretch that out a little bit. <laughs> you will be able to flush your toilet. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So. There's, definitely, Thank you for coming. there's definitely some big numbers there. Yeah, they yes. are. Yeah, absolutely. And when they all add up. You know, you, you got to pay for them sometime. Or the yeah. library oh, and then, yep, know. all that stuff. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye, Good, night. Good night. Thank you, everybody. I would like to go with them. <laughs> I'm tired. Um, okay, so um, next one, and we are 45 minutes late for it. And, and thank you so much for coming. Uh, is our energy committee updates on the green community's competitive grant application? So yes, thank you so for, much for uh, coming. Putting us in here. Sure. Thanks for Sorry staying late. Sorry you had to wait. Yeah, I really appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. So do you have yep, sure will. This is the Angel City Main Draft. Okay. Thanks. Still need to come. So we'll get right to it. Um, we have been working closely with Alyssa LaRose and found out um, maybe a week ago that the police cruiser, um, if they are looking for a hybrid 
um, at which they were, that we could get $5,000 rebate for that. And up, so, to, up, up to. Up to, yeah. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah, yep. it's very cool. And um, John already got information to Alyssa. Mm -hmm. It's all Great. cool. She's got everything I, she needs. Hopefully, so that covers the, that's a pretty, the cruises I that think we just got? Pardon yeah. me? No, it no. covers a new one. No. Oh, the new oh. one coming up, I think. Oh. Oh, we can't. For next year. I don't think you can retro it. One? No, you can't. You can't, you can't have bought it before the grant is No, we have to. Oh. It, it'll, be, it'll be after July when, for, when, we, they, when we hear about the grant. Cruiser coming up for next year anyway, so I think it's fine. John was fine with that. Yeah. He said yeah. this way he gets to fine. really test this one out that he yeah. has. Make sure. Make sure that it's what he wants. Right. He was, he thought he would have no problem at all with, mm -hmm. with this schedule. Okay. Okay, good. Um, and then uh, as far as the... EV charging station, I know um, when I came and summarized this earlier, I wasn't aware of the green communities funding for it. So it looks like if we can go through with this, and Alyssa will definitely jump in and help if, if you want her to, um, we can, between the make ready from Eversource, which, which I think Diana and Kevin has, had gotten rolling, and the mass EVP, EVIP or EVIP um, application in green communities, we can cover all the initial costs. That's wonderful. So my concern was, how are we going to deal with the, have you guys started investigating the charging fees and paying the electric bill? Because yes. yeah. that's a piece of the entire project, and we need to know on the back end so that we don't get right. surprised once this gets put in. Well, because there may be procurement things we have to deal with. Right. So I. Did you get the quote? I, um, I did get okay. the quote. So we got, I got a quote from um, Walter Ramsey, a town planner in Montague, has just gone through this. They got a good deal because they're an econ, econ, environmental justice community. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, he gave me good information and hooked me up with a vendor and explained all of the details um, to me. So basically, the... Eversource will put up a separate meter for the charging station and set up a separate account for the town. And we can set the rate at the charging station to recoup the cost of the electricity based on the current kilowatt hours. And, and um, he suggested at um, Voltrek that you add 20% on to that. And then Char ChargePoint collects those fees and reimburses the town. And hopefully we come out a little bit above um, Does the game. Charge point get a uh, cut out. Of yeah, that? they do. They, they get make a ten percent. Yeah, yeah, they usually get a. So that's why I was. Um, we were brainstorming. Um, I don't know. I think maybe Steve, my partner, was at Greenfield Savings Bank and thought, "Oh, you're right next to the Leary lot. Why don't we ask you to sponsor it?" Um, the so I, I have on the back here the annual costs. Um, there is a a break if you buy a five-year plan for the network fee, and I thought it would be nice to establish these charging stations for maybe the first five years, be a really low rate, if we can get the bank to give us a $5,000 um, donation. So that's what the other piece that I made for you is I just kind of roughed out a grant application to Greenfield Savings Bank with that proposal. Um, and there's an online application that we would have to fill out. Oh, that's nice. So that's, that, that's not necessary. That would just allow us to offer it at a much lower rate. Um, and it's an it's a opportunity for their employees. And they can also, um, I, I wrote on the application, on the face of the charger, the new chargers, they have a little L LCD screen, and they can make some little, you know, slogan or a logo on there about Greenfield Savings Bank. There's a little space on the charger itself where they can um, put in a sign that says, you know, sponsored by or whatever, Greenfield Savings Bank. So I think we might be able to sell it. Um, and I'm, if with, you know, if you guys are interested in that, I'm, I'm willing to follow up with that. Um, or, or I, so you can look so, at my draft of the application, and I guess Casey would follow up with that. It needs yeah. the and so my whole thing number. on this, I'm excited and all for it. My only thing is just making sure we're in touch with Ty and Bond and Surveyor, and we, you know, kind of factor that into the layout of what we're doing as the master plan right. downtown of El yeah. you know Elm Street, the Common, Leary Lot. Just 
we're doing these tree boxes, that kind of thing. I just yep. want to make sure it's all tied in so what we put in is like fits with the plan. Well, I, and I'm leaning on Kevin for that. Yeah. He said go for it. So um, yeah. it does say in the... It needs to be discussed with Ty and Bond, who's doing the engineering work on that, I think. We're, um, we're hoping. I don't know. We don't have a contract. Yeah, it with needs to be coordinated way. with Eversource, who's doing the putting yep. it in. It needs to be coordinated right. with the MVP plan. And it, Correct. I mean, you know, all of that needs to... Yep. The timing needs to be. It is. It's but, tricky. But I think in relation to us applying for the grant, mm -hmm. then once in July, by by the beginning of July, we should have heard. We, we, when does the money have from this? It's not really so much the grant when you apply for it. When does the money have to be spent by? It's Before be we apply again. And so oh. If you oh. Do, well, that's, <laughs> so that's the you thing. don't have, you're not like fiscally July 2021? Here's oh. the thing, you tie your hands if you don't spend it by June right. 30th. We ran into it in Nashville this year. Yeah. So what happens is, is in, you can re you have to just grants. get back to them and say, you know, no, have a reason. This year they wouldn't do that. Oh, really? Because that's no what extensions. we did last, last our last grant, it went they on did. forever. The designation <laughs> grant was like that because yeah. Ashfield was like six years. <laughs> yeah. But the Deerfield's problem is bad. they ran into that as an issue because yeah. it was holding funding up. Uh huh. So they started setting a hard deadline of June 30th. So in and the out issue the door. around yeah, this in terms of I'm connecting with Ty and Bond and MVP and all those yeah. things is this if is we don't have certain things in place, it could be difficult. So I guess I guess and um, hit all those. those right. I guess I'd want to make sure that it's July of 2021 and not July of 20. Right. We would receive the grant July in July of 20 okay, and have so a year to spend get, it. And so we wouldn't even 21. see the money. No. And and the town pays up front and gets reimbursed. Okay. I, so, I think that would fit with our timeline. I hope so. But it, it it's would. the you complete know, streets capital, piece so. of it. Right. And, well, working yeah. with time bond on that because as long as we, we just know, I mean, started we having know those conversations about where it's going to be as long as we kind of have a plan the hold, and they up, can the hold die. up is what we were going to do with the whole leary lot but we'll have a decision by we'll, we'll know what it kind of looks and like this is not so where, where the right. um handicap accessible spots are right now is where i'm in that's exactly that, right. and that's out what towards Kevin the road and I had right talked about right with so Diana we, after i think we could whoever does the engineering can kind of pigeonhole that like we're doing with the tree boxes downtown so, so we'll I mean, I don't things. have to push the how it's good for the town as far as, especially like, um, air, you know, air pollution mm -hmm. in the downtown community oh, no, kind of thing. That. I know I don't have to push that. But the other aspect is that Tim Simmons from Eversource did say that, I don't remember what he said that they're running out of funding and right. we'll get on a wait list kind of thing. I think I CC'd you, you on see, that. Yeah, you yeah I said that. On that. Yeah, so. Um, so just to keep that in mind, um, yep. you don't know where the funding is going to go for these things. So if do do we want to? Would you like I our guess, support then to make a vote to say go ahead? Yeah, um, I guess I don't know that we have to approach Greenfield Savings Bank until we find out that we've gotten funding. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. I think that's appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I okay. think that also makes sense because then if you do get funding, then you do want to move forward. And, you know, they're a private entity. They don't have to, they probably don't have such a tight cycle as we. No, yeah, I don't sometimes know Sometimes they, they, have, they have a certain amount of money they give away each year, and if they've already given it away, right. you might right. have to wait. They do. They have a cycle, and we'd right. have to wait. So right. I don't know. But maybe I don't know what that cycle maybe is. Maybe it wouldn't be a, a bad idea to just float it by them, and maybe they'll put up their own EV charging. <laughs> I don't know. But you can... Let me know on that whether we should go I think ahead there's consensus approaching that them. we want you to go forward. So with the Greenfield Savings Bank um, application as well? I think it's okay. you could run it by and say this is a tentative outline. So you can at least find out what their funding cycle is. Yeah, what and their how much, cycle is. And yeah. how much money they have left. Right, that was my year. initial thought. It was just to begin a discussion with right. them. But they Start want the you to lay out the whole thing. So You yeah. don't have it all laid out yet. So Well, I did you get the... Um, the letter for green yeah, I've okay. got this. So it's that's a start, and um, it's got the link to the application online. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want me to. Well, no, I, I, I still think we need to hammer out some of this information before you. Okay, so um, Alyssa said that she would be happy to work on it. She hasn't done an EVIP grant, and she said she'd you know love the experience. So, um, yeah. Okay. So that's that, and then. Street. Are we paying for her help through DLTA or are we paying through consultants? 
I think it's, what is the name of it? That, um, it's is that or is it the Meta the, Grant? The Meta, the Meta I, Grant. I think it's the Meta okay. Grant. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. But I okay. don't know. I'll ask her. I, I wasn't remembers. part of that original she discussion. She kind of suggested to me that she could work it out <laughs> without Sometimes charging us anymore. Sometimes they can if they have extra DLTA money. I yeah. don't know what they have yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah, so yeah, I'll let you all, figure that out with them. Not always they use up all their hours, so they might have appropriated some of our, the hours to extra Well, and So we had a regional energy committee meeting last night, and I think her, you know, um, she's thinking if I get one community going on this, then it will be a lot easier to roll up the other communities. That's exactly so she, what she's, she's thinking. happy to have us <laughs> yeah. be kind of a um, guinea pilot. The guinea pig, pilot, yeah. right? We'll call it a pilot. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Um, <laughs> guinea pig. The uh, LED yeah. streetlight conversion. Um, so I, again, I just want to just say that we've been working with a vendor. I don't know if you have his information or you'd like to know his information, um, how that fits in with you know the work that he's done. I'd love so far. to know what I can catch that, you up on all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm excited that this there's might be opportunities here. So So um, basically um, in the conversations that I have had, uh, well to go through the numbers, in twenty nineteen we spent almost thirty thousand dollars. Uh, for our 292 streetlights. That we don't own. That we do not own, and most <laughs> of that is rent. Yes. Uh, the, if we, were, we would apply for the green communities, uh, if, if the grant is successful, it will cover the cost of buying the fixtures. Be huge. Um, and, uh, and then it also, um, and, our, and the electrical, the supply is through our, our current aggregator. That won't change other than the fact that it will go down because they're LED lights rather than so. Yeah. So, so they, the, buy, they will buy the LED light, you know, fixtures. They'll pay for the fixtures. For, okay. the, for the most of them, the Cobra ones, but not the ornamental ones. No, right. actually, that's changed. Oh, okay. I have an update so, on no, that. Is, <laughs> is this buying new? So we still have to buy the lights that are there. Yes, we, right. the grant will cover the purchase of the lights that are the, there the, already. That are, they yes. are already, and then and then we'll also cover the cost, cost of purchasing the new lights. Well, that's what we've been looking for. That's so I'd be what, curious yeah. what um, what Paul Paul has to say. That was our consultant because he was giving us some numbers and stuff, and we were looking for these opportunities. That's yeah. a real term guy. Yes, yes, thank you. Is that so you have a contract with him, or are you just discussing? I don't think nope. so. We I met him at MMA, and he he. Uh, came and did uh, an analysis for us, and then he had a contract that we could do if we wanted. But if you we if never, you've got another never, version, we didn't no, no, he, he gave a presentation back in September, and that's thank you. Yes, that was the one. That's right, the man. So I just we, we, up just, one of we just we just did not um, proposals. We didn't we didn't have the um, money allocated or budgeted, so we didn't pursue a contract with him. And I, right, I and we can't him. until we have any, either the yes. allocation or the grant. Correct, and I haven't. Um, I looked for him again at MMA. We missed communication and never saw each other. But he has emailed me since. He said, hey, are you guys moving forward? So he keeps checking in. But I'd love some guidance and help yeah. on that. We have not. I, do, I mean, I have not looked into the type of light fixture we want or, or any of that. Yeah. What happens is the way, the, what Alyssa will do for us is come up with an estimate for the cost of purchasing the LED lights that is done up by um, MAPC, the FERCOG and mm -hmm. the Boston area. Metropolitan mm -hmm. area. Yeah. Metropolitan, that's Area planning committee. Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Too many acronyms. Um, so, so they, and they have a little program that she has, and she'll look at the number of street lights we have and the types. Mm -hmm. And it was that MAPC would give you a 30% grant but they've run out of money right now, so right. they're they're done with that program at least temporarily. But uh, we can apply for the whole thing from green communities. Right. Right. So so and in, and and MAPC would only do the Cobra heads. Right. But the oh. green communities grant will pay for anything. They don't care options. what kind of lighting it is. Yeah. yeah. So that's okay. actually advantageous to us. It is. Um, is what stuff? we won't get is the MAPC expertise because they would 
they would run the whole thing through. I'm curious what his cost is compared to whatever else. You know, just kind of compare the two and touch base. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll look back yeah. to that. Yeah. Well, I'd like to caution yeah, everybody. We've got to make sure that we're following the procurement because there's of specific procurement for energy yeah. that's related to this. Okay, perfect. So somebody look into it. And Eversource, right. <laughs> Eversource also has some uh, additional incentives that they w will provide, but oh, good. not until... Uh, not not really you can't nail them down no not, it's, it's it's i don't think they give you that until they know you have a grant right exactly that's what happened in nashville yeah they had a exactly couple of those things yeah oh. so so, I so but but there are there is a potential of some right. ever source money right I, that's but basically we can apply for green communities for and all when you do this you know i know the number is you know 292 but there's a you know, quite a few lights that got shut off the last evaluation. I was we just evaluating. <laughs> I went. I, I went that. today, this evening, after I got Ken Garber's thing. From I thought source. his his uh, 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 not an audit, but his inventory. Yep. Uh, I started going through, saying, and I looked at the number that the police actually shut off. I think mm -hmm. the, there were forty or so lights. I found three or four that were on his that were not, but pretty much most of the ones we shut off were not in that inventory. So what I'm saying is that there are people that want those back on. So there, there are areas in town that, there, that we shut off lights that there may be some that <laughs> we want to put back on. You so. remember that. I, so. I not only we remember that, the flip side of that is. There may be some people want to shut off. I, but the energy like committee, when we first did it, the police only, we recommended a certain number of lights. The police right. only shut off 40% of those. So 60% okay. of the people got their lights. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, we yeah, were. And they're still not lighting up. And they're still areas. unhappy. I mean, I know right. my, my neighborhood, I, I don't know if they're LED or not, but there's, there's a lot that are there not are no on. There are no LED there. lights. Okay, so, right. they're just, so it's all. they're just not much on over there. I mean, it's on, and then some days it's off, and then who knows what. Well, that's. It's like. I just want to make sure mess. I'm putting it out there. Somebody on West Street would really appreciate. So I just want to so do a little bit of evaluation. If you guys to want to get involved in putting on, tur turning on people's lights, <laughs> yes. that is up to you. Good. I want nothing to do with it. Well, that's okay. <laughs> turning the them on or off. Of I've already done it. I, I want nothing to do with it. So I'm happy to get involved with that. So. So one thing Eventually. I would caution everybody oh, about is once we purchase these streetlights, we are responsible for the maintenance and repairs right. on them. Yes. And that was a conversation that Kevin and I had, and I think he brought it up with you guys yes, too. Yes, and, and, and he, the Paul guy spoke about it. And but, so there's a funding issue around that because we've got there a, is. the most, if, if I remember correctly, and he'll send me an, a text if I don't, um, the most effective way would be to hire a vendor to handle right. those things. Right, we need a, we need a basically a, con a maintenance contract. Exactly, right. a maintenance contract. And, and, and what I understand, like. the range is between a dollar a light, a dollar and a dollar 25 a light a month, which, should, which is $3,600 a year. Mm -hmm. It's, a, if anyone it's wants to go into that money. business, because LED lights <laughs> don't need much service, right. I would highly recommend they go into it. It's very profitable. And the report. But, the report you have there on your desk is that that was the one what he gave the town is that right or yeah. okay good all right just want to make sure that was visible for people and have it um, okay great and and we can contract with um, the town of Amherst that's what well Gil I don't did. know uh, I that don't know, that's what Gill did years ago and I don't know whether they still oh. are but Alyssa is looking into she's checking she's made some phone calls today to okay. check with people about who they use it, who they're using okay uh, North. Uh, Shelburne Falls is doing is just a little ahead of us on this whole project. Buckland too, I think. So and if Buckland we did this. When could we expect to have to put that into a budget? Because I'm trying to think in terms of budgeting forward. Well, because we're tight this year. Oh yeah, yes. it's going to have to be 2022. But, but, but we're also going to be saving nineteen thousand dollars a year. Right. But we don't know when that savings is going to hit. Right. Because when there when the lights lag on it. when the lights. I mean, we will not be paying so any you. rent after we buy the lights. So as soon as we purchase the old lights, that whole rent piece Which disappears. Which theoretically we could reallocate to the vendor contract. Which I would. For maintenance. Mm -hmm. I would yeah, right. think that that would be the best way of doing that. Yeah, Did they give you a timeline on when you can start to see, like what, when you do that transition, when do you start to see not only an elect, electric savings, but also the, the um, well, the, as, so, as soon as we have purchased them, they can't charge us rent anymore. Right. 
So, I mean, I mean, still had but the thing is, is that right? doesn't play out until you research, until you go through an entire closure process. So what I'm trying right. to yeah. it, it, very not well explain is the effect that we have to plan for in terms of fiscal year turnover. So we likely wouldn't see all of that by the beginning of the next fiscal year, not mm -hmm. 21, 22. 22. So I'm just trying to think in terms of a bigger picture of how yeah. we deal with the funding piece. Right. So that Kevin doesn't have to sit and worry about all that. That's kind of, it helps if I try to help him worry about it first. Yep. I don't know the answer. I love you, Casey. I try. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't always work, but I try. <laughs> so, um, okay, that's just something I'd want to keep in mind. Yeah, in the I, I, I think. Um, what was your plan to buy them? To actually buy the lights from from the power company. Our, what is my plan? That would be the. Um, In the terms of your schedule, grant. what would that be? You know, I, for the. Fi I don't know. I I don't know how the wheels turn. The grant. I mean, in other words, we get the grant. Right. Theoretically, we You've could go to Eversource and said, say, we want to buy them tomorrow. Did Ken give any information about that? I did I've never. I didn't ask about schedule. Okay. And he so is that might be a question to give he, he to throw is out before he leaves. Yes. <laughs> That's the 10th of April. So guess what? Can you send that email tomorrow? <laughs> I, mean, I talked to him today. Okay. That would be one thing because Ken, when Ken leaves, he's going to take a huge amount of institutional knowledge with him. Yeah. And I know he's done this for many towns in the area. And Shelburne may even know. I just don't know who's handling that. Terry yeah. Narkowitz is and the I'll, I'll double check she with both Alyssa and, and Ken and, and find out That'd be great. what they would imagine the schedule would be. Just functionally for us working on yeah. it. No, I get it. Here would be helpful. Right. Thank you. Okay. Next uh, item. And and the last, long, so last get, piece, get out of here right, the last piece is um, something that we are... Um, hoping, I think, I'm hoping Thinking to about. do, <laughs> even though it's a lot of work, but I think uh, it will make me feel like I can handle the climate change news. Um, so there's a Mass Clean Energy Center has a Solarize program. We are thinking of re renaming Asheville it. Asheville did it, didn't they? The mm. Solarize Mass program? They did, Asheville, I think. Buckland. But it's, it was before my time, so I don't oh, know okay. all the So they did it, okay. I think they did it with Buckland and somebody else. Um, Belchertown is doing it I, this I year. I didn't it, have to handle it when I was there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Belchertown has um, got the funding this year. But the idea is to just kind of do a, a group um, information, public education campaign and try and bring a lot of people interested in doing the same kind of thing at the same time so that we can get a bulk purchasing rate on that. It's, yeah, it's a bulk, bulk purchasing system. Uh, and streamlining the, the process of permitting and finding installers. So but, it's for, but now they have Solarize Plus, so you can add all these other things to it. Heat pumps, mm -hmm. electric vehicles, yeah. all We're these different, so you can, you can, yeah. um, and, and the, state, the state gives every, any town that, we'll, we're talk, we would go into it with Sunderland as a team, and possibly Conway, and possibly Waitley. We've talked to all of them. And if we did, each town would get five thousand dollars, you know, to hire an energy coach and to, you know, do some do a variety of things. So the program Outreach. is much better than it used to be, which they didn't give you really any money, and it was a huge volunteer. It's still going to be a lot of work, right? But you guys um, have a heavy lift there. So I that understand. we handed out those little flyers at the at the Saturday yep. thing. Do you have some for me? I, well, I was going to ask you. Do you have? Did you send that to Pat so we can make sure it's up on the website? No, not yet. We are not yet because we've okay. we're, formalized we're, that. Um, our thought is that March after March twenty seventh. Yeah, right. <laughs> we, that sounds like right. a great idea. Right. We might. You I know, just didn't want to forget to ask. Yeah. yeah. No, thank no, you. No, we have to set after it March up. March twenty seventh. I won't remember. Right. Because um, because what we'd like to do is sort of kick it off at town meeting with handouts and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So we we want to have everything set up and ready to go to do the survey to see if we have enough community interest. That, that's our first that's step. The, I was and if we that. don't, have, you yeah. know, if there isn't community interest, then we get to go home and, you know, watch TV, <laughs> which is fine. But um, if we do have community interest, we'll proceed with it. And, and Sunderland has already done a survey and, you know, oh, so, okay. so it wouldn't, it'll be a year from now before we would apply. 
So, and then my last two cents is that last night uh, there was a regional energy, energy committee meeting and somebody from the Clean Energy Center came out and spoke about microgrids. And bringing up the generator at the elementary school just made me think that I'd just throw that out as a future thing to think about. Um, the town of Montague is doing a feasibility study right now. And that would kind of, the, the vision is that a group of community buildings all together would maybe put up a solar canopy over a parking lot and get some battery storage and be an island unto itself if the, the power from Eversource was shut off to us kind of thing. So um, It's part of the resiliency idea, concepts that yeah. people are talking about as towns having microgrids so they can be self-reliant. So they are, there is a, um, you can file an expression of interest at this stage. I don't have the information yet. They're going to send us out, out to us, but you know, there's a lot of things going on right now. But it, it will be interesting to follow what they, they found out in it's, Montague. Yeah. To see. It's, it's still, uh, I don't think, it's still in the conceptual stage yeah. for, for Franklin, Berkshire counties. Oh. I mean, it's, people are talking about it, but I don't, think anybody's actually done it? No, well, Montague has a feasibility study right now. Right, no, they're but they talking just about have a feasibility study. Yeah. Nobody, is, nobody UMass, has a, UMass has one, and yeah. a couple of the colleges in yeah. Boston have it, but not really yeah, community-wide yet. So anyway, I just thought when you talked about <laughs> generator, I would just throw that just in. Just throwing out an idea. Once you've, once you've heard the term, then you'll hear it again and again, well, and pretty thing, soon, you know, it starts level. sinking in. So, Casey, if you just wanted to touch base with Alyssa and say, go for it. <laughs> yep. I'll write myself a note right now. Okay. Um, and I, I just wanted to show you, there's some amendments I wanted to share with you about that um, quote. I turned uh -oh. my phone off. I thought I turned mine off. It's not me. Well, uh, okay. I'm going to go home and go to bed. Is that okay? Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. you. No, well, we're going to try and <laughs> persevere. Thank, Thank you so much for coming and staying so late and getting through this with us. Um, Do we have any updates on the solar system at the Can landfill? Home, at the landfill? Uh, MA, any I update? Do. Oh, you have it? I do. You do. Okay. We're working we're on the contract. The inventory? No, the, um, we're Wait. working on the contract for the landfill. The landfill. Oh, do we have it? We are working, working on, on it. We're working Perfect. the language out with both sides. It's a complicated contract. Okay. Beth is being oh, Beth Blatt, uh, Greenblatt's been very helpful with it. So Lisa Mead and Ben Taylor. Yes. Yeah. So that it still has to come together, but it's no. But it's something that we're trying to pull together so that we can pull it onto town meeting. Um, make sure it's on the warrant. So that's why we're working together. And Beth and just sent an email. Yeah. Yeah. For the agreement. It's a pilot agreement, so yeah. Yeah. You can explain. Yeah. Is it I'll try. Has Eversource granted the connection? Mm -hmm. Has Eversource granted the connection? I don't know all of the details yet. I'm just working on the contract piece of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yes, you said that. I got your email. Oh, okay. Okay, good. They, they warranty it for one year, but I don't think they need that. And then this is what we would do with the Okay. So that's, we would, we would have to talk to this guy, uh, Steve, is his name is Steve Giordano, and just get yeah. him to do uh, more a revised quote. what we need. Yeah, okay. I asked him for it, but he didn't send it to me. Yet. Okay. <laughs> All, right, All right, so right, if we do bollards, we don't have to have that. Yeah, no, I was really, uh, every source will do that. I was really excited about all right, thanks, guys. Okay, thank you. Have, have, a have a good yep. evening. Have a good evening. So, <clears throat> every night, every night, every week, um, all the time. So, uh, budget. Uh, so, this is select board reports and announcements. It's just kind of a little bit of updates. You know, obviously, we've had our budget meeting yesterday. Um, we're looking to meet again with um, all finance three boards, and finance and capital, um, to go over the budget and compile and see what we're going to need to cut. Um, uh, school committee we just met with um, and passed a budget there of 2.9 percent to um, to add into our our, our complete budget. Um, CIPC we just had our meeting here. Uh, Deerfield 350. I I think maybe Carolyn. That would be something Carolyn yep. would give us. And then 
uh, pilot precision TIF update. Do you want to hit on that? Well, what they've requested, so I had a conversation with our um, representative from the state. Okay. I've looked back at a couple, and I've given you guys some information. What yep. I have right now is what's there, but I need a little more clarification from them. Okay. So, so I'm going to reach out to Kim Reddick about it. That's great. I'll leave it where it is right now, and yep. you could work on what you need to for that. Um, so they did request a TIF. I think, they, yeah, they did, they did a while back. And so I need to pull some information to together. I was just trying to talk to yeah. Be Deb Baronsky to see what the background was because it good. predates me. Yep. Um, so Board of Health reports and announcements. Um, I know Carolyn will have some, some more on this, but I, I, if anyone saw the meeting last night, we did in Deerfield along with the governor, um, town of Deerfield. Um, did an emergency declaration, emergency declaration. to respond to COVID-19. Thank you. Um, so we are um, moving forward on that. This is a fast moving topic uh, with a lot changing fast. Um, hourly at this point. Hourly at this point, we've been getting, um, I was on a, a call today with the Department of Public Health and they're- They have another one on Friday. Another one on Friday, they're gonna do these weeklies. Um, you know, th this will change the way you live your life for a while. And, um, you know, kids are not, really susceptible to it. Obviously you can get sick, but they're stronger. They have better immune systems, except for if they don't. Um, and then, so you have to be very careful about that. And, um, you know, if, you, if you're not feeling well, it's not a time to go visit grandma and grandpa. Um, you know, don't drop the kids off sniffling. Um, there's, there's a lot of, you know, you have to be careful. We may have to, um, you know, if you look around the world, Italy's in complete lockdown. So. This is gonna change fairly fast for a lot of us and we're gonna do our best to keep you in the loop and in the know. Um, you know and again, so what's happening in the background is things that are happening with the STAM community, town councils following this because there's various issues out there. Mm -hmm. um, certainly there's been questions about how to handle meetings, how to handle um, any kind of gathering. Any kind of gathering. Some towns have started putting guidance out, but there's also, on the flip side, there's an HR element that the towns have to be aware of. So I've been following up. It took up a good portion of my day today. Okay. Um, so cool. at some point, the reason, I've gotten notes about this, so we're gonna have to, there's some things we're gonna have to take on. Um, HR issues, so there's employee policies mm -hmm. flying around out there. Amherst, I gave you a couple yep. from various places. Some more guidance from Mass D DPH. Um, some clarification I received from town council this afternoon mm -hmm. about the fact that at this point, and the legislatures, the governor's office, they're all trying to work together because there may have to be some legislative relief created, yes. um, not only for town meeting, and that's what Barb's following. Yep. She's following I've elections in town meeting with Dan Graves, yep. but we may have to have some legislative relief as it relates to fairly common things like open meeting law stuff. Because right now, according to the open meeting law and town, count town council's comment to me today was, we can't limit how many people are at a meeting. It violates open meeting law. Of course. Law. Yep. So, but I've seen some comment, I've seen some other other direction out there from other places that is that are doing that. So yeah. we just need to be careful. Right. Exactly. Um, but at some point, yeah. we're going to need to move on some of these mm -hmm. policies to deal with our internal issues, just like the school is. Darius, yep. I know, is dealing with yep. this over we're there. Having good conversations um, with them. Giving people guidance about how to handle impacts they'll feel personally in here in the office. So yep. one thing that we've done is we've upped our cleaning game. Good. We just received some um, cleaning supplies. Carolyn, part of that emergency declaration, like you said at the elementary school, or the, uh, the school committee meeting was to help us create the avenue right. to start funneling the money. Right. And so what, what Diana helped me with this afternoon was, Carolyn had mentioned sending a letter out to um, DLS about setting the amount that I we thought that. we yeah. might have yep. to spend to. Yep. So my aha moment at the school committee meeting was remembering to put that in there. Yep. Diana drafted it, so you have something you can look at. We can yep. get it I've off to that. Sean Cronin if you if you want to. Yep. Um, it may be useful to do that now because the town accountant set up the account to deal with yes. this emergency declaration. Yeah, and I just is that do we need to notify him of the account number and stuff and what we're I doing? I don't know if we need to notify, notify him, him of the account, but we do need to notify him that we expect to have to spend. Right. Okay. And All in right. that blue folder are the originals for everything you need to sign. Okay. I'll 
I'll deal with that. But sure. essentially the gist of it is, is we're probably going to be coming forward with some policies we're going to want you guys to vote. I'm just trying to give you an yep, example, an idea fine. of what that's going to be. And I, I just want to mention that I know it's budget season, we're all crazy and stuff, but this takes precedent. So if there are meetings that you need to get together pretty quick, we can always call an emergency meeting. But um, um, just keep us in a loop. If there's something during the day and you're like, I need you three here tonight because we need to deal with the policy or whatever it might be, just let us know. We'll, we'll I'll try ahead. to prepare for it, but I know I'm going to have to sit down with the department heads and talk about this yep. as soon as we have a little more clarity. framework yep. and clarity. Yep. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, so we can circle back around yeah, we'll, to the yeah, to the vote later we will. if we'll you want that. to. Um, and then there's body art regulations. There's a first reading. So here. that's what they do with the COG, and I think it's a really great thing. We do. I, yeah, um, I love to do that. Having, having been a rep, I, I understand the need for it. So this is the first version of body art regulations. It was drafted using MD, MDPH guidance, Greenfield's um, regulations that are currently in place, um, Northampton regulations. Right now I've got the Board of Health agent reviewing it. Okay. And we have published the hearing notice for the, select, uh, the Board of Health to address this mm -hmm. for the 25th. Okay. So we had to publish it a couple times. That's in the works. Yep. Um, if you guys read through this, I think if, if Dick has any questions or changes, he'll give them to me. Yeah. And I will resend an okay. updated version. But Good. I wanted you to see what the breadth of this is. Yep. yep. I'll go through that for mm -hmm. sure. Um, all right. That sounds good. And then we have... Um, just coming into discussion items, I have a sewer abatement from somebody that's probably going to have to abstain. Yes, he's going to have to move <laughs> over there, and we need more information. Yeah. I don't know. So I, you want to just tell us quick, and then we'll let me take this up and figure that out. There yeah, may be background I have to get, so what I'd like to do is the, have you explain what we need. all the way through has been about 28,000 gallons on my water bill. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, the last bill I got, it was 63.8. Have, um, have you had a meter change? No. We've seen that issue at a couple houses, no. so I just want um, to check on that. Um, the only thing that's come to light was that um, long showers? Huh? Long showers? <laughs> no. <laughs> that's just the history of that house. <laughs> Five girls, a yep, wife. I can, yeah, right. It's just, yeah. you know. No, we're all not right. talking about that. So <laughs> I don't, uh, uh, the, um, it's, I can't read this, but we'll get yeah. it on the front. I know, I, I the, need it. Um, what it was was the, uh, and I'm investigating it right now, they put in a new power line down along the driveway going mm -hmm. to Blake Gorey's place. Maybe hit a wire, hit a wire. And okay. there was a puddle of water there yesterday. So and I'm thinking that maybe there was a leak. Can, have you had them out to look at it yet, or are you going to do all that? Um, I'm going to have him dig it up and take yeah. a look at it. Yeah. Right. Okay, good. Okay, so you're going to get in touch with the water district? Oh, well, it's not the water district line. It's my line. Oh, oh okay. All right. So he asked if he could dig there to run the power over to his new building. I said, yeah, go ahead. And I didn't realize they were going to may, possibly may have an issue. Okay, line. so please, yeah, look at that and then bring that back. To all right, so we need to bring this out. back for the 25th yeah. at the okay. very earliest. Um, okay. We have a public records access policy here, it looks like. So we didn't have one. I went and investigated. Um, I mean, what a, a public records stuff. access policy does is it sort of refines how people can expect to receive information. And For the, the public records request. Yes. Because we did all that. Um, See, I couldn't find anything. So the public records access officer is different than the policy. It got dumped into our office. A lot of towns is town clerk. Like yeah. The clerk is, you know, so it, it wound up in our office, and we've been trying to deal with that, and it's, it, this is a nightmare of a... Well, this is issue. the reason I'm bringing it up. So this public records access policy is basically framed on the guidance that the AG's office has given us, about has given towns that I've been right. involved with, you know. So... What they really want you to do is, f is send people to the website. And so the access policy refines what people can expect, um, identifies who they need to speak to, yeah. and then 
it gives us a framework to start building how we're sharing information on the website. And it worked very effectively in Ashfield. Well, your website in Ashfield was great. There was a lot of data there. Not There's a lot so of much. data foldered in a certain way. Once that, we exactly. showed people how to find it. Right, very so simple. Right. The, the upshot on all of this is I didn't see a public records access policy, okay. so we need to vote so one. So let's look at that. Um, and if you want to wait until the Can next I? meeting, that's yeah, fine. It it's a first look, read. And have a discussion yep. and figure out what we want to do with um, that. But, but yeah. the other piece is there may be an impact because if we need to make some changes to the website, we need to get ahead of that. Yep. Because there's a lot of documentation that has to get uploaded. Uh, I saw... Or rearranged. And I say, yeah, it may be there, but it's not easy to find like right. it is in Nashville. So I'd like to mirror that very much. So what I did was I had Pat reach out to um, Civic Plus, which yep. is the company that bought right. Virtual Town Hall. Right. We, we're we running on the Virtual Town Hall platform right now. Yeah. And so what I asked her to do is get some background information on how we could figure out an easier way for people to get to documents. Good. Okay, great. I'm all, I'm all for that. That's Okay. Better information. And does anybody remember who else may have been mentioned as a designee? Uh, it was Wendy and... Um, I thought John was on the on a list yes, that I he, saw before. Yes, he's been deal, dealing with that as well. There's a lot of public records requests through that, uh, through his office, um, and I think it was just Wendy. Okay, uh, but I, all right. You know, originally it was talked about the clerks. In a lot of towns it is the clerk, but... Um, I thought Barb was... She may be on it, but I know that she's been. Well, she responds from the clerk's office. Right. The issue is, is it took us. We had a public records request that came in a couple weeks ago, that I sent out what we could find. But it's a significant amount of work to go through paper oh, records, which we know we're going to have to do. Yeah. But on the other hand, if you can just funnel people to the website when they have simple requests, oh, it yeah. makes it a heck of a lot easier. Yep, yep, yep. And we, we I that watched that forward. happen in Ashfield Perfect. and saw it happen successfully. So good. I'd like to just mirror that yep, if I can. Yep. That sounds good. Um, and then we've got um, the FERCOG ADA self-evaluation and transition plan agreement. So this is something that we've been It's been in on. process. Yes. We had to make some changes to the scope. Yep. So we're putting it on for you guys to approve, and the originals for you to sign are in the blue folder. Okay. But essentially what it does is it helps us identify our ADA issues. Yep. Um, and it's supposed to work with this GR the building assessment we're doing because they're going to hit some of the ADA details. Mm -hmm. This goes through, this also adds programs and access um, that may not be covered in that building assessment. So it's, they're going to pull this information together so that we have a, a better idea. And essentially what we have to do is create the self evaluation, do the self evaluation and create a transition plan so that we can A, qualify for grants that are coming down the pipe the and comply with state law state because we do have the USDA grant. Uh, this came we, up because of yeah, that grant, because I think. Of the grant. Okay. Do yeah. we have uh, 13,000 budgeted it's, to deal with this? Or Diana this? told me where it was coming from, and I can't remember. So she had it figured Yeah, somewhere. she had it I know in, that she'd been working on it. She had so, been working yeah. on it. So I just can't remember what the detail is right this second. I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's fine. We can double check But we that. did, when I talked to her, yep. we were ready to sign this. So okay, good. We, All right. I wouldn't have so you sign something I'll, we didn't know. I'll make a motion to approve and sign the uh, FERCOG ADA self-evaluation and transition plan agreement in the amount of $13,000. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So I'll, I think this money was incorporated into the uh, wastewater treatment. It Not could have been, yeah. I know that she... 13,000, it looks familiar. Yeah, I think there was something about I don't about know. That. I really don't know. Someone's answer. Someone's answer. I, I she told me, because we talked about it a couple weeks ago, but it's probably yeah. flown out in my yeah. COVID, the information coming in from COVID-19. <laughs> so... It's taken over the world. So this is the ADA. Okay, so... And then you have... Hold on. <laughs> I was there a minute ago. Oh, I need you guys to open the town meeting warrant and review the memo I gave you with some of the actions that I've had requests on. And it's, we used to do a vote, and I took that up to Ashfield, and it was pretty, what it does is it just notifies people once you do the, the motion to open the warrant. That's not everything. That's what I could, what I had pulled yeah. in. I'm, I have a folder, mm -hmm. an electronic folder where I put notes and emails. Yeah. So that's what's in my electronic folder right now. 
Um, there's something Perfect. hanging out there in the back of my head that I can't what, remember. What do you, but. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed that. What was that? Oh, to open the warrant? Open yeah. the warrant, yep. and then there's a list Those of the, the requests I've received right now. I'd like to talk to, to uh, Yes, the first Mr. One. Evans is here to speak Great. to you. Good. My time? This is your time. Yeah, come on up. Well, yeah, I'd like to Carolyn to be here as well when you when you speak. Um, but let me just I didn't look give at you all the quick. details of all the articles because it's a lot of paper. Well, we're just going to vote to open the open it and then right. we'll, we'll And that's you'll see that out. there's information there and then I'll push that out. So, so that's the thing. Your stuff will go out when I start pushing so the information. So I make a motion to uh, open the the April 2020 annual town meeting warrant uh, for articles. Do you want to read the vote? Do you have one here? Yes. Is this That's it? the vote. Oh. That's the motion. <laughs> yeah. Why do you make it so easy for me? Because it's easier for us. <laughs> I move to declare the warrant for the annual town meeting currently scheduled for April 27, 2020 at 7 p.m. in the Frontier Regional School Auditorium to be open. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you need to note that anywhere? We It'll be in the minutes. Anything. Yeah. It'll okay, be good. in the minutes. All right, good. Um, Shh, I'm working on that. Can't solve everything like that, but I'm working on it. All right, so let me. Um, Mark would be that. giving me a look for saying that word. Hang on. What you looking for? Oh, I just get screwed up and trying to find the front cover again. Oh, the memo? Yeah, just if my... Cover. Okay. For what? My meeting. Oh. <laughs> meeting disappeared. Your agenda? Your agenda? Yes. It literally just disappeared on me. I can fix that. Take Jen. Uh, Carolyn, she won't know what's going on. I know. I just. No, she's moved her yeah. stuff around too. I know. It's, just, <laughs> here. it's crazy here. Hang on one sec. Let me set that there so I don't. Yeah, so we've done the FERCA, we've That's done the annual town meeting, the CPA recreational fields application. So the CPA application, um, Tim Hilchey sent an email back after CPC discussed this initially. Yep, it needs um, to be flushed out a bit. It, he wants it flushed out a, bit, a little bit, and so we have to figure that into a workflow in the office. Yep. Um, and I, I thought we, I thought John did most of that presentation piece of it. But I, what I would like the select board to do is um, vote to have us make those clarifying changes for CPC so that we can move forward on it. Um, we do have some more information related to um, the property, but I don't, I don't know all of those details. I just know right now we need to deal with the application. And I think so when I talked to John. I didn't know where you guys were on this because I couldn't find a vote on it. There isn't really. So what? Um, I've talked to John a bit about this, and um, he was going to gather up some information this week. And because uh, I'm, I just want to make sure we have our ducks in a row before mm -hmm. we try to really flush out this. We, so we're, we're applying for some CPA money to begin the process Correct. of our rec fields. Correct. We don't have a specific property yet. <laughs> No, um, we didn't. We had some ideas about some properties. Ideas, but so it's it's kind of a shell game at the moment to try and figure out exactly what we're doing on this. We have a need for for these yes. fields, and we have a a, a possible spot. Um, and I'm told the recreation committee is interested in starting to pursue this. I just didn't know. And so, listening to the capital improvement planning committee, I didn't know how fleshed out that was for them either. It's not. It's not yet, and so there, there's some things that are moving fast. There's an opportunity that could be really good, um, but there's still some work to be done on it. So I'm not sure exactly what's needed here. I know that John's working on cleaning up this application. I don't know if there's a vote needed by us because I'm not ready for a vote on this. So that's what I needed some clarity on. If we're going to do a cleanup of that application, um, we need some indication from the from the select board. Well, it's not just John. It's I've got to pull that of uh, pull pull all that stuff together. And if I'm going to do it, I want to make sure that it's it's something you guys want us to pursue. 
because there's a work, the workload in the office is pretty heavy right now. Agreed. Yeah. And so I think that's the hard part is, um, and they have a time limit. I think I don't want to pass up the opportunity. They do. They're meeting community Thursday. preservation is yeah. I think Thursday. It's to, yeah. To, and, and this all needs to be laid out by Thursday <coughs> and uh, mm -hmm. a week, I think a week from today. So or a week from I don't remember. I no, honestly no, don't remember. I, like that. So um, I just think um, very worthy to go ahead with, and I'd love, you know, the opportunity to do what we're hoping to do, but it's, um, there's a lot of moving parts here that I need to answer on. Well, I think what the, the way it was explained to me, if we put the application in, um, at least we've got the ask we've out got there. Some ask. That's exactly right. It's and it might sure settle itself as we get closer exactly. to town meeting. Yep. Um, but there's certain things that the town has to be cautious about. You can't agree to do a purchase unless you have approval by town meeting and a bunch of other things. Yeah. However, if we miss the deadline, we're going to wait another year. We would have had to wait for another year. And, so, and you, you know, if you're going to acquire a piece of land, you can, it's not like you just have private money. You can just go pull it out of the bank no. and buy when you want to buy. You have to line up a lot of ducks in a row, and that's what makes it very difficult for um, a town entity to, to do something like this. So and it, so clarifying the application at the very least allows us to make the changes that CPC has requested. But that's something I would want the select board to come down uniformly on if they want to. Well, we'll wait for... Carolyn. Carolyn. Okay. Um, so then, uh, select board annual oh. town report. I'm working on it diligently. Um, actually, if you need some help, Diana offered to help out. Perfect. That's great. I'll, I'll so get what I would I've do is shoot her an email and. <laughs> I've got half of it written, but I just, shoot it to her and see if she can help me with I it. Don't have time because I'm at town meetings until 9 30 at night. And that's what I was going to say. That's why when, um, when we talked about it, she offered. I'll so put, if you yeah, email I'll, I'll get with her and I, I've got okay. um, a good chunk of it written. I just, I, I think I'm up to April. I've got to get, keep going. So. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll keep working on that. Uh, interim um, administrator letter of approval for signature. So let me just get to that. And so it's the separation letter to right. for the transition between the interim and the permanent. Yep. Um, and pres it allows us to preserve, you know, some of that transition time, and clarify how that would work. You know, payroll, payroll and benefits. Okay. For so. the interim. And it's something that Diana and I both discussed. And agree that this will work. Okay. Um. Okay. So in order to make this change, we had to clarify by making okay. changes related yep. to the contract. Perfect. Okay. And you've done all that and it looks like we have a signature. There's a couple of, op a couple of items here. And in your blue folder, you'll see that there's Something the ability for you to approve the letter, but also the change that to the contract. preserves the contract okay. terms. And, and you worked on this with council as well? I worked on it with council. Perfect. Council gave that to me, and then yep. Diana and I Perfect. sat down and hashed through it. So I'd make a motion to approve the notice of termination and um, the continuation and revision of the contract between the town of Deerfield and special projects coordinator. I'll second it. Any further discussion? I know we have the money in the budget, so we're mm -hmm. in good shape there. So yep. all those in favor? Aye. 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 So I'll sign these copies. I think there's space for you to sign too, David, on the contract. Really? On, on the, the contract, contract yeah. Piece, there's space for him to sign. Yep. I space I said for you to sign. Space yes, for you to sign all of us here. Yeah. Yeah. If I just read my notes, it'd be much faster. This is why I used to publish a report. I didn't have to read anything. <laughs> but I don't have time to sit and pull it all together quite so yet. So we've got some um, 
let's see. So mail, we've got a mail list. This yeah, is cool. I list. love this. So received so a a mail list, MDOT but it's a mail list. chapter 90 funding notification. Uh, we have a Woman Hill Town contribution. Yes. Is that in here? Yes, a copy okay, of great. it is in so there. Okay, great. So thank you. Let me go through this. So uh, we were, this letter certifies, this is Mass DOT letter certifies that pending final passage of bond authorization. That's the expectation we can Communities, chapter 9. I don't know if Kevin's seen that, though, for this so I'm apologizing year, right now. It's 2020. Well, we'll get it to him. 388265 bucks. So that's all the money we have to do every project that we need in town. So. I think that's why he has no hair. <laughs> So, and then we're also in, in receipt um, of a very uh, generous town um, a contribution from Woman Hill uh, to, the, to the town um, of uh, $4,121. Mm -hmm. So uh, very, very, very grateful for that. Them. Very grateful for that. Um, and, and they had I a thank you note enough. that accompanied it. Yep. That, so I made copies for you guys. Great, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And then ZBA request for comments. Um, let me just take a peek at this. So this is a special permit to construct an addition on a lot that is non-conforming to current frontage at 117 Old Main Street. Um, assessors map 49 lot 17 and I don't have all the background I made sure that you got this we're gonna put this on the I next thought... agenda for you guys to actually draft your comments to meet oh, their deadline it almost feels like this was brought before us before I don't know this was brought before and, and it was... I was on the board and we denied it that's what I, I thought know. it was denied I don't know what the situation because is I haven't gotten all the background well, yet. Bob was a couple things there was one it was way too close to the property line right I almost remember this from recently but but we'll see I don't um, so the background I would information write... that I got last time from Bob the building commissioner yep. and zoning officer that helped you guys make some decisions so if you could grab that that's again what I'm gonna do. that'd be great but I wanted you to get yep. it, in this case a first read because the deadline for their return for comments we looked at this already yes once, but I think so. is the end of the month or beginning of yeah April. it said uh, please return by May uh, April 2nd so we've so got that gives time. us time to do it yep. at the next Can I just meeting look at that again sure I think we we had, yeah. We talked yeah. about this before. What I so. wanted you to do is see that it's coming in, and we'll She's going to get some agenda. background info, and then we'll have it so on the next agenda. So we can address it. So we're going to, I'm trying, because it's late. I mean, we're going on 10. I would, now that you're back, I would love to hear um, from. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Lots nope, of COVID okay. stuff. Got a lot going I went through on, the so. basics, which is what you're seeing. Okay. First, let's, well, so wait. Can I just, can I, what I want to just say is that it's so important, and we're working with the senior center. Yep. And, um, the problem is there's no immunity for this um, virus. There's no known treatment right now. There's no vaccine for another year, and it has a longer incubation period than normal. 14 days is more. It could be very well be more than 14 days. So, and the and the targeted group is elders. So we are re and anyone with an immune suppressed immune system. So we're really, really trying to be protective of our seniors. The number one goal of this group, of our select board and board of health, is that we want to uh, decrease and the, or slow the spread of the disease, and and protect our elders, but also the impact to our healthcare system. Mm -hmm. Um, we need to spread it out, so we need to be smart. There's going to be dis disruptions, but we're going to we're going to make it through. Yep, we had a big, you know, good conversation on oh, that. Good. So thank you I'm for sorry. all you're doing. There's some examples. That there's going to be so. some policies we're going to yep. need you to work yep. on. We yep. just there's a little there's a too many moving parts right As this second. As we said, this is going to change fine. by the yep. hour. Oh, you so. found it. I did. I found mine. Thank oh, you. Okay. So, um, so we um, just to catch you up. We did. Um, I was just looking for mine. So. Uh, Dave Wolfram's got a sewer abatement request. He's looking into that right now okay. to figure out what's going on. Uh, we'll public bring it back questions, to the next agenda. Access policy. I want to review yeah. that. Yeah. We'll go back at that. We signed the ADA self evaluation. Yeah. We understand it's thirteen thousand. I think Diana already had some I think money we set have aside budgeted. for that. And I just don't remember. And it's the required anyway. So. Yeah, the funding piece. Um, the annual town meeting. We open the warrant, so that's open. Um, CPA recreational field. We got to come back to that because yeah. I'm not really sure what we're doing with that yet. Um, there's some more information I, I need on that. 
Um, uh, I'm working on the town report halfway through. Diana said she would help, so okay. I was going to work on that. Um, we accepted the, um, we, we signed the letter of termination for um, our interim town administrator, and we, um, we adjusted had to make some her adjustments contract, in the contract to keep her through the end of um, March. Okay. Um, so, and then we went a couple of things. We went through mail. Woolman Hill gave us a donation of four thousand one hundred twenty-one dollars. Oh, yeah. Was great. And there's uh, we got the information on the DOT um, chapter, uh, chapter nine, three hundred eighty-eight thousand. Okay. So, okay. But we I'm had sorry. we had given out. So I had given you a list of um, articles that we have had requests to add. And Mr. Evans is coming to ask you guys. Yeah, so I thought I wanted to, he's been here all night, so I'd love to have him speak to his request that we put something on the. And you have the list, you don't have all the language because there's a significant number That's of fine. these. Yeah, so these, these are the it's items just a that memo. are on there. Just a Stating quick Stating what you can expect. Mm -hmm. So okay. there's planning board, marijuana and floodplain zoning. There's uh, town administrator, town accountant, SCEMS rent, you know, revenue allocation stuff, um, the capital stuff at at the, okay. the school, uh, police officers, Age waivers, yep, I yeah. saw those, um, American Way, road layout, the Oxford property, um, pilot we precision tax that we, we hit on quick, but she's gathering it's, more it's information, still working on it now. solar they projects to, to look work. at, um, and Richard Evans. So welcome. Thank you for being patient and staying up late with us tonight. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Richard Evans. I represent uh, GoGris. Uh, <clears throat> owner of 198 Mill Village Road and the proponent of the uh, article that was submitted to the select board, then thence to the planning board. They held their public hearing a couple of weeks ago, and now I'm here formally and respectfully to ask you to place this, uh, this article on the uh, warrant for annual town meeting. Can you give me a quick um, shorthand of where the planning board's at, and what where your uh, proposals at, where the differences are, and where you know where. Sure. We're, it sounds like we're probably going to have a couple things that are going to be asked to be put on the town mm -hmm. warrant. Sure. So the they, uh, I think they compete a bit. As you know, last starting last September or so, or so I, I realized that the planning board was keen to to consolidate the two marijuana sections in the existing bylaw. And, and, and as you know, GoGris was eager or, or wanted to see a, a tweak in the zoning law so they could do a product manufacturer operation at that site at 198 Bill Village mm -hmm. Road in order to provide the town some new revenue, which we've talked about tonight. We've been wanting that. Um, and so uh, realizing that if I drafted just a little tweak to the existing zoning law, by the time they got to town meeting, there'd be nothing to tweak because I knew the planning board was, would be submitting a whole new suggest, a suggested section. And so I drafted, uh, for the purpose of uh, saving the planning board, I drafted the, the bylaw, which I thought they would want to draft, frankly. It's uh, concise. It's about five or six pages. It's uh, a, basically a rewrite of the existing zoning. And the only substantive change is to allow product manufacturer and the RA district on sites of five acres or more when co-located with a cultivation operation, intending thereby to, to limit the, the number of such operations, because I knew the planning board was, was, was wary about, uh, about putting them, sprinkling them perhaps through the RA district. Uh, so uh, I, I drafted that bylaw, uh, you know, went through the usual legal procedure. The, uh, now, meanwhile, the uh, planning board independently has been working on their own version of a bylaw. And the last, uh, uh, at, at uh, the chairs, at the planning board chair's request at their last meeting, I took a few minutes and tried to point out some of the differences between our mm -hmm. and their, their draft. And those differences are, well, first of all, theirs is twice as long as ours. It's I noticed that. very wordy. Yep. Um, also, I thought that there were some significant uh, uh, problems with it. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, it perpetuates the distinction between medical and non-medical marijuana. Right. It confuses the uses of land with the users of land. 
it contains a lot of unnecessary uh, I saw that. and redundant uh, provisions and contradictory. I, I think it needs a major overhaul. Mm -hmm. But the general thrust of their bylaw, in my opinion, is to turn the town back Correct. to last year or the year before to make the marijuana establishments much make make the, the the town much more restrictive right. to uh, marijuana establishments and yep. to 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 uh, uh, actually to d reject the, the the opportunity for more revenue uh, for the town and uh, so I think the voters if if both of these drafts reach the floor of town meeting which is a little unusual but hey it's yep. we've seen this happen before sure. Um, that I think the voters are going to be faced with a very clear choice between the two approaches. Yeah. Ours is uh, status quo, short and simple, with that substantive tweak, and a few repairs, minor repairs, as you know. Uh, theirs is, well, long and wordy I was trying, and trying far to get more restrictive. It. So the, the two are really fairly different. Yes. Uh, now, they're holding the public hearing on theirs uh, next Monday night, the 16th. Yeah. And um, I don't know what they're, what's going to happen to theirs. I, I don't want the two to be linked. Correct. Uh, I think that would be confusing. It would be confusing. So, so my, I, my request tonight is simply that you put ours on the warrant. And, and I want to say that I'm open to sitting down with anybody and trying to work out any differences or I think compromise. I'm, I'm right. wide open to that. I, I think have I, I want to, like before I just um, make a motion to put something on the warrant, I would, I do want to sit a little bit and talk, you know, not at 10 o'clock at night, but um, I know that we've wanted to get together just to, you know, just to talk about what you're proposing, just so I have a better understanding of it, because there's a lot that's coming at us all the time for many different issues. And I want to get my head around this really well. I, I started to go through the planning board's language, um, and it, it looked extremely um, restrictive, and um, it was adding in a whole bunch of language that was just like, like you said, trying to r ring this back to something the town did not want in the in the in the first place. Um, but I do want to understand the concern about um, manufacturing in in uh, residential areas. So want to understand how that affects um, towns, what are the un unintended consequences, and how do, we, um, how do we really put language in to kind of really hold that to a medical marijuana facility and what type of manufacturing is allowed. We say manufacturing, and this is talking about processing, processing, processing the yeah. items and, and, and making some gummies or something like That's that. Right. So um, it, we're not talking a, you know, um, an industrial steel right. steel mill. Um, right. we're, we're talking about maintaining or working on the plants Grading that are there. The Grading of it. So I want to understand like and what that language is. How you know can we make that somewhat restrictive so we you know so we rest residents at ease that they're not going to wind up with mill plants you know all over the residential area and that they are very strictly related to just this processing of 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 an agri not an agricultural product but it is. It's a plant. Let's, yeah. You know, well, so. certainly uh, the, uh, the 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 new bylaw, the, the, our proposal, uh, requires a special permit for any such operation. So the yep. usual standards for any special permit would still apply. Yep. And so there's the opportunity for the board to impose restrictions on yep. on any operation that would would protect the the town. Sure. Uh, okay, that's good. So it's fairly yep. standard in that respect. And that's, that's where we would look to those conditions right. or any special permit for the, the detailed protection of, mm -hmm. of neighbors um, and so forth. I just want to make sure that um, the one correction I wanted to make sure get, got done, Dick, was that um, we added um, in the town of Deerfield to establishments this, the, I think you, the difference between, you know, the distance between different establishments. Oh, yes. Yes. We I think that. you did fix yes. that, right? Yeah, that was that very was important. That was one of the one. repairs. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That was that was my mistake from years ago. So we have some time to get stuff on the warrant still, but I do I would like to just get you know sure. when it's not ten o'clock, sit with you and go go through that a little bit to get educated fully on what the you know what you're doing, and then I, I'd love to go to the planning board one. Of course, I have another meeting that night, but um, and just fully understand what they're where they're coming from, so I can educate the public or people who ask me or. Um, Anyways, I could advocate one way or the other for which 
which change we should be advocating for. So, um, sure. so I appreciate the work you've done on that. And um, I'm so sorry you had to wait here all night. <laughs> but you're waiting longer than I am. Sorry. <laughs> 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 it's, it comes with a job. We're getting big bucks for this. Though. <laughs> right. The um, question I have: uh, What about? Um, You know, granted, I, I'm not well versed in the uh, the changes that you're proposing, but mm -hmm. with uh, hemp and processing that, would that no bearing, no connection whatsoever. I hemp, well, I know too well. Well, because hemp is viewed as, as an agricultural deemed product. an agricultural product. It's not subject to zoning at all, and it's regulated exclusively by the Department of Agriculture. But if they wanted to produce CBD, I you mean could this plant produce I, CBD? I don't think you can. You can't. You're not supposed to be able to do that with hemp, right? Well, actually, it's a good question. I think I you know. probably could. Uh, if 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 they well, were growing nothing but hemp, or they're just growing hemp, could they could they produce the, they CBD? This, I, I suspect because it's an because agricultural product. It doesn't have product. THC in it. Right. right. They use the hemp because it doesn't have the THC. That's right. And it's so maybe, maybe. Huh? I said maybe. So I'm just, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm just throwing this out there yeah. because, you know, I don't want to have to go through. Because obviously, you know, within eyesight of where you are, <laughs> mm. Mill Village, there's mm. hemp. <laughs> so right. it's just, you know, I'm just asking the question. But Yeah, no, hemp, hemp is exempted because it is considered. I, I know that, but yeah. it's of that part. Where are they but, growing hemp? Everywhere. 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 Buckland. No, I've seen that, but I haven't seen it in Deerfield. Oh, no. I think it's been already harvested. In really? I think well, Steve I Milnick has it. On 91, when I go up, I could, you obviously could smell it all summer long, but then it just kind of stayed on the field and dried up. Is, was that him? Which field is no, that? No, that was the guy who's down the Red Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, not sure you, what you're talking about. You drive up 91, right, between Deerfield and Greenfield, on the right, I don't know if that's Savage's Farms or whatever, but that big section Milnick, there. Milnick. Is that Melnick's? Yeah, Melnick's grew hemp. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, they, they have a the Melnick's have a hemp that, patch. I didn't know where it was. Yeah, I just saw it out there all year long, and it just st stayed until snow, pretty much. And then just, I thought they plowed it under. I don't know. They could have. They could. Yeah, I don't know. There was a lot, there are a lot of uh, uncertainties about markets for hemp this okay. year. All right. And I think maybe next year it'll be different. Yeah, because but I think, the. Uh, so what is? But is here there a again, concern the, or a well, war? it's just that you know. The true hemp has to be in a in basically in a closed, controlled environment, because you can't have the female plants contaminated by the male plants, because when that happens, then you start getting THC in there. No, 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 no. It doesn't. That's not a big problem with with hemp. Well, what's the problem? Well, the problem is contempt is cross pollination with right. with marijuana plants. Right. Yes, if, 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 you, if you grow hemp near marijuana, yes, you can have cross-pollination, cross which makes all your female oh, plants yeah. produce seeds, and you, you lose the, <laughs> the, uh, the point. You, know? yeah. <laughs> you lose a crop, basically. Yeah. Um, but I, the point you raised earlier, Dave, was really good. Suppose they were growing hemp in that greenhouse on Mill Village Road. Would they need a special permit or zoning indulgence in order to process it? into CBD? I don't think so. I think they'd be allowed to do that as a matter of right. And the town would have no, nothing you could, you couldn't stop it. It would be no different than um, uh, growing lavender and then distilling lavender oil so out of it. What's the difference uh, here then? Well, actually it'd be no different from processing marijuana either. Right. I know. Yeah. It That's is what I'm but, saying. But we call it because it's, because it's deemed hemp and therefore yeah. agricultural. It's yeah. allowable, but because it's marijuana, marijuana, it's marijuana, I know, marijuana it's regulated. Not, it's not. classified it's not. as a, it should have been as a. And it might be at some yeah, time. Sometime. Yeah. So, in my uh, okay, I'm just asking. That was really a I good question. Yeah. Make sure, because the question may come up when the, about the zoning part of it. I'm sure it will. How would you like to leave it, uh, Trevor? Would you want uh, to give me a call? Yeah, uh, please I'll do. do that. I've got your contact. You got, no, we'll you get together. Me. I'm, I'm fine. I've got nothing to I do. Already, I've already <laughs> I think it's important that both of you understand what yeah, that's, they're I just actually going to do. Right, and what, where the planning board's coming in. And I already I, know. So. Just based on reading that, I didn't feel like, I felt like it was like a lot more restrictive than what we had intended last year 
or whenever we pass this thing. Well, kind of I, I agree, agree with you. So, okay, but good. I don't want to speak for the planning board. Understood. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'll do my own um, research there. When will you make the decision about what Putting it I, on the budget? Yeah, I mean, no, no, on what the, articles are you going to put on the warrant? Uh, well, we've got... Oh, right now, we'll do it as a placeholder, and then they'll make a decision when they go through and review the warrant. Yeah, it'll that's be... That's generally it'll be how weeks, I direct them. I think. We've got a little bit of time, I think, right? Yeah, you've yeah. got a little bit of time. Well, at least to our next meeting, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, if yeah. not I was going to ask you guys to leave that open until the first meeting in April. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I think we'll have a, we have to, we only need seven days to post the annual warrant. Right. And this COVID situation is a little fluid, so right. we're waiting keep it to see what's happening. But doesn't the warrant close? Like the warrant isn't closed until they vote to close it. Yeah. What's, what is, what is uh, March 27th? That's a Friday. I know, but isn't that the date? That, I thought the warrant closed that day. No. The vote says seven days. Say? Seven days before the meeting, right? Well, you should close it before. Oh, that. I know that, but I'm just but, saying. Well, we got by to post. Law. We have to post the warrant. You have. You need seven oh, days right. to post Which the is, warrant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you back up. I wanted you guys to close the how warrant many, in the beginning of April so we could sort through those. You need 14 days for posting, right? For special town meeting, not for annual. Annual, you only need seven. Right. Oh, really? Yes. yes. Okay, so. Right now, but we have all kinds but of work what you that needs need to be done. Is you Barb need needs to do a bunch to go of stuff. through your yeah, warrant and exactly. review it. So right. we're giving it not quite a month. I, yeah, we could shorten fine. it, but it's up to the select board we'll how they want to deal with it. We'll look at it at the end of the month or beginning. Yeah, of April. Well, we'll look at it at the twenty fifth. Yeah. This, this is actually time. April twenty seventh. Is uh, that's it, the town it, meeting? Yeah. That's right. town meeting. Yes. yes, but I I thought I read in the town ordinances that the warrant closed on on March twenty seventh. I don't know. I haven't read it no, for a while. Always, it changed since I was here. <laughs> we vote. We vote to close it. But yeah. we're. I, I think we'd be might be ready by the twenty fifth to make. Well, we'll look at that. Yeah. But also, we do not really sure tomorrow. what's happening with town meeting. Town meeting might be postponed for a little bit too. That's so. kind of what we're waiting to see. What goes on with town meeting? All right. Well, please keep me informed. Oh, we will. We will. Yeah, we will. Definitely. <laughs> we will. No, no worries right. there. Yep. Okay. Yep. We've and been I'll going down this road a okay. long time. Good, so. good. Okay. Thanks for coming in tonight. My I really pleasure. appreciate it. Okay. Spending the night it's with it's us. a very illuminating, mm -hmm. actually, to okay. sit here and listen. Good. To this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dick. Thank you. Um, so, so it is, if it is the 27th, we have time. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I just I'm, I really apologize. Um, on the 350th, did you? Um, we didn't so know we anything about it. So we don't have an appropriation. That's the problem. The PEG money that's in contracted services goes strictly for operation of FCAT. It doesn't, we don't have a separate appropriate. She had asked me a question about. Um, we needed to, we needed a thousand, or well, we need at least $600 for Ken Schoen to start interviewing the seniors for the, oh, the 350th. 350th. Oh, cool. And I, I think I can find it, but well, we I did have check some with money Brenda. in there already, right? We have like fifty thousand or eighty thousand. What happens in is, what? is in so Owen Peg access. Peg. Well, the, so here's what happens with yeah. Peg access. It doesn't just come into the town coffers. It's specifically yeah. allocated in a certain way, and that changed several years ago. So the money that's allocated in contracted services for Peg is going directly to FCAT. Right. It's I based know, on they, their they budget. budget. Oh, so yeah. They, okay. So you have right. to talk with Chris and get on his. So you know, I don't it know would need we would are, need but. to, and I talked to Brenda about it. Um, it's not a huge amount of money, but my question is: Is this going to be ongoing? How long do you think this is going to go for? For a while, Carolyn. I would say. Since um, you're planning for the 350th, I would assume so too. Oh. It may be well, something we need to trying, address. The reason why we're looking to do at least 20 people, we want to get started yeah. before. You know, soon as I mean, possible. as right. soon as possible. So if we're going to pay people, we need to think about this in terms of next year's budget, too. Yeah. Well, I think the question is, is to get on FCAT's meeting schedule and find out what their budget is. And this seems like a pretty important thing for them to be fitting into their budget. I mean, they have an annual, annual budget. They get 20 grand from us a year. They get money from Waitley. They get money from Sunderland. They, but I don't know how it how it's allocated, how much they spend in salary. Do I mean, they they, still they're here every night with doing, a working. What's that? Did they still they present you with a budget like they? I've never to? seen a budget. I saw a budget when I looked over their paperwork that was in there from 2005 or. Well, they made long changes. The state made changes as to how you could handle peg access funds several years ago. I um, just don't know what their, and I what their operating be, budget is and, and how they, you know, I'd love to go to a, a, to a meeting of their board. I don't know who's on their board and uh, find out, you know, 
how they make those decisions, how they fund things. That kind it's of a stuff, question for do. Chris Collins. Yeah, so we should we should get. But an do you think you could him. find? Um, yes, I will try to find that it, money. Uh, it would probably even go into next fix, fiscal year. That's why I'm asking the question because if we're going to do that, I probably and we're going to add it. I probably need about two hundred dollars between now and the end of the fiscal year for. Can I'm not as started? worried about that. I'm worried about FY21. If we're right. going to add it to the consultant's budget, we just need to well, then factor would, in what we've got. Then and I would add $500 into the 21 to, to cover that. Hopefully Wouldn't Skip doesn't have out of the, the 350th celebration we budget, can't, We can't use that until 22. You can't use any money. The uh, town appropriated money. We can use... Donation money. Donation money. Do there's we have any donation money? Two hundred bucks in there, I think. Yeah. All right. Kind of, well, we're there you keeping, go. We're keeping that for um, um, copyright. And okay. Stuff like that. Can I, um, because it's wicked late. I mean, I just I know, really got to get out of here. But the um, the one thing I wanted to ask though is the one thing we didn't hit on was this letter to Sean Cronin, de um, senior deputy commissioner. Um, this was the letter that we declared an emergency and that we, you know, we have so an account. So this is a notification that, that Diana and Brenda helped me come up with. They, you know, Diana right. did the so, typing, Brenda and, and, I, I, and I, Diana tried I to figure no it out. I have no idea how much money we're going to spend. We just, so, like snow and ice, we're doing right. 25000 We're doing 25000 because we're mostly doing, like, small stuff, like the seniors, they're going to go out, uh, the senior center, I don't know, someone is going to go out and buy the spray bottles and the towel paper. And, and do bleach with the seniors. Can I get a motion on this then? I make a motion a that we notify the DOR. And we'll update them as the... Um, we may not spend any, that, but any it gives Any further us discussion? Yep. All those in favor? Aye. Um, Aye. Thank you. But what we'll do is we'll update DOR as, as this evolves and what kind of costs we're incurring. I mean, this is our best guesstimate right now with no information. Thank you. Um, I do. I just wanted to hit on because I missed these last time, and I I know that no one's up at ten o'clock watching these. But maybe oh, they'll be replay surprised. these days. <laughs> but uh, Deerfield Recreation News. I'm hoping I'm not too late on this. Some of this I am. Um, but there was a recreation of baseball registration. I think is all done because that was March sixth. Um, but you could also. Um, the department is also offering dodgeball that will take place on Thursdays, March 19th, 26th, and April 2nd at the Deerfield Elementary Gym from 545 to 645. Registration forms are, are on the website. This is the, um, the you, you can pick these up in town, or, or I'm sure this is on a website too for dodgeball. This is registrations are open. I don't know if it's closed because this has been a week. Um, you must pre-register for this event by March 17th. So there you go. Then now you know. So you have a little time to do that, but do it quick. Um, and then uh, let me just hit on a couple other things here and make sure. There's a recreation committee vacancy. Um, so if the recreation committee, um, you know, recently regretfully accepted the resignation of Chuck Knight, the committee thanks Chuck for his many years of service. He was a great addition and, and help to the committee. If anyone is interested in being on the committee, please submit a letter of interest to your recreation uh, and your recreation um, philosophy to the uh, recreation department by March 9th. I think I missed that, but um, maybe she, you know, if she hasn't gotten any, she would take another application. Um, please get involved. You know, kids need you. We all need you. So please, please do that. Um, I think that's it for notices, but I, I missed those, and I apologize to to Sue for missing those last week. But I just want to hit that. So um, that's it. So motion to adjourn. Make that motion. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Please be safe out there and wash your hands.